Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to Dev Chatter. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Brendan. I am the host here at Dev Chatter, where we do a uh, regular live stream uh, about four days a week, and we're usually writing in C Sharp, although we do the occasional bit of JavaScript as well. Uh, most of what we've been doing here lately is .NET Core, because we're big fans of .NET Core. It is new, nice, and most of us believe it is the future of pretty much all .NET development. Uh, hey, Twitchloff, welcome. Uh, so, as I'm sure some of you have noticed, uh, I am not alone right now. There is a person up there in that corner way up there. You see that? Uh, that is Eric Fleming. Uh, Eric, you should be unmuted, so go ahead and say hi, and we'll make sure your volume's right. Yes, hello, everyone. Can you guys hear me, everybody? Brendan, can you hear me okay? Yep, I hear you just fine. Uh, All right. And I'm hoping everybody else can hear you too, but there's going to be a little bit of stream delay every time. So, uh, Eric, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. I think this is uh, this is a really cool stream that that you have going on here. Um, so my name is Eric Fleming. I'm actually a senior software engineer with a company called Clear Measure, and I've been writing C Sharp .NET code since so what? Since I was 17, and I actually started my career off with Brendan. Uh, he's kind of, I've worked at probably, what, three, four companies now together uh, with Brendan. At and least. Yeah. Uh, it's been a, a privilege to be able to work with, with someone as the, at Brendan's caliber. Um, he really knows his stuff. It's been, it's been great. Um, but yeah, I'm currently, uh, I still write in .NET, uh, C Sharp every day. Uh, my focus lately in my free time has been around Azure Functions. Uh, and durable functions as of the past two weeks. So as you can tell, I'll, my Azure Function shirt. So uh, that's what I've been really getting into lately. So if you have any questions on that, I'm in the Discord channel. If you would ever have anything uh, that you want to know, let me know. And he mentioned our Discord channel, which I'll go ahead and link in chat. Um, so if anybody is interested in talking with any of us about any kind of dev stuff, uh, you know, during, before, after a stream, uh, head over to our Discord, and you can chat with us there. Uh, there are actually a bunch of people that chat in there, most of whom are the ones who participate here in the stream chat, uh, as well as people who have uh, committed and, you know, posted issues and things like that are, are contributors in our GitHub. Which, uh, speaking of, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, which I don't know how you don't know this, but github.com slash devchatter, you pretty much have to be new to not know about this since I link it multiple times every stream. Uh, all of our code that we do here on stream is out on GitHub, so it is open, public, for anybody to look at, uh, criticize, make suggestions to us, anything like that. Uh, propagate it. I will bump up his volume a little bit. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, Scott Doc, welcome. How's it going? Um, Scott Doc, Wait, Hello. did the bot not... Wait, how did the... Did, did Scott Doc crash the bot? Oh, Scott Doc crashed the bot. I blame Scott Doc. <laughs> It's clearly his fault. Uh, really? Hang on. Um, yeah, th well, well done. Uh, Scott, go ahead and try joining again quick. Yeah, no, 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 that's very useful. So um, I, 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 I joke when I say he, uh, he broke the bot or, or whatever it is I said. Um, uh, well, you wouldn't have won anyway because Rock was already taken. Oh, man. Yeah, see? Hang on, we're going to restart the bot. So, I don't know, something got wonky there. Um, as I mentioned, um, all the code that we work on on stream is um, out on GitHub, and literally the bot that we're using in chat is like my local copy, which if anyone is on Discord probably noticed I was making some recent changes to. Uh, and uh, that actually includes... Uh, I, I've been working on updating us to the latest version of TwitchLib, which is some significant breaking changes. I've been adjusting how our connections work and all of our settings and things like that. So right before the stream, I had to go and switch everything back to the old way. So if the bot wonks out and does some weird stuff today, that is probably my fault because I was messing with my local settings. Um, for those of you that don't know, in order for you to not see all of my... Uh, connection information, my credentials, uh, to connect the bot to the stream. Uh, in our settings here, you'll see that all these values just say secret, and that is because those are all in our user secrets file. And so, um, 
you won't see any of those here, and I am not foolish enough to debug. Uh, so I need to do one quick thing. Uh, Eric, um, I need to send you a link. So let me go okay. ahead and do that real quickly. So sorry, everybody, I need to give you this screen for a second uh, because I want to click this link and then I want to click on that and then do this. Um, I need to send Eric the link. So you guys won't hear Eric for a second, but hang on. But if you listen carefully and pay attention to which keys I pressed, you'll get to hear my password getting typed in there. Uh, all right, so yeah, exactly. So now I need to send you the link. So one second while I get Eric this link. Okay. Um, Eric, how do I want to send you this? Uh, I'm going to send it to you. Yeah, hang on. Yeah. Uh, oh, I was going to just Twitter message it to you there. Join that. Well, because I had our conversation up. So I was chatting with him on Twitter about this. Uh, anyway, uh, so now that that link is no longer being shown on screen, um, I'm going to go ahead and bring all of you guys back so you can see us again. So, hey, we're back! See, there was nothing going on. Um, Janisku, welcome. Arid Tag, welcome. Hello, everyone. I, I, I see our viewer count is going up, so people are starting to show up uh, slowly but surely. So, welcome, everyone. Uh, once again, I'm going to mention we've got Eric Fleming up there in the corner, so this is another one of our pair programming streams. Uh, so, this will be a good one. Uh, not that all of ours aren't good ones. They're all good ones. What am I talking about? They're all good ones. Yes, yes, I know, I know. We crashed the bot right now. I need to figure out what it is. Uh, second operation started on instant memory. Um, okay, so you joined. Welcome. All right, so you able to see the solution all right? I am. Okay, so that E is uh, Eric in here. So he should now be in here and uh, should be both of us working on this code. Uh, let's go ahead. I am going to debug. That should not mess with... I hope that doesn't start up a bot on your end, Eric. We'll see if it does. I don't think that it should. This is actually my first crack at live share, so well, I am extremely excited about this. Welcome. It's fun. All right, so... Uh, yeah, everybody testing out all the commands. Uh, <laughs> so if you want to see what commands are available, those are the ones that I can run at least. Uh, Scott Doc, no kidding. Um, let's see. So... Here's what we want to work on. Uh, sorry, I got derailed a little bit by messing around with the bot. Um, so, uh, I did mention to everybody that we have all of our stuff out on GitHub that includes all the issues, which are where we get the ideas for what stuff we're going to be working on. So if there's something you want to see us build, this is the place to suggest it. Uh, so what I am going to do is I am going to pull up this suggestion. So someone on stream suggested that we make a quiz game in the bot, and I thought that sounded like a cool idea. Yeah. So, uh, I think that would be a good one to build. What do you, you you good with this one, Eric? That sounds fine to me. Let's do it. All right, let, let's knock it out. We're going to build a quiz game, everyone. Uh, and I've got some ideas for what we can do with this one. It's actually, You'll notice that this has been around since March 22nd, so we, <laughs> we've, we've been waiting a while to do this one. Um, I wanted to get further with some of our games, and I think we're in a good spot to do it. So, uh, before I continue on, let me do one other thing that I want to do. And that is, I am going to come down here, and I am going to enable this. I need to restart Visual Studio, son of a... I guess I'm going sans resharper. <laughs> Whatever are we going to do? I know, right? Uh, okay, so... Uh, here's what we want to start with. I want to make a quiz game. Uh, tried live share, could got tank or unit test to work. Very weird, Twitch Loft. I'd love to know what happened there. Um, we're going to make the quiz command. So now we have a new class called quiz command. Public quiz command. And... This is so cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Asterix Sanath 14 welcome, thanks for following, and I apologize if I butchered your name. If I did, just tell me how I butchered your name, and I will do better next time. Okay, so are you watching me here, Eric? I am. 
All right, cool. Um, I don't know how much you know about our um, uh, code here. Uh, so I want a so I want to pass repository and role required on to the next one, which means I need to take these in as parameters on my constructor. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make this an I repository repository, and I'm going to make this a user role, which I think is the name of each of those. And we're going to confirm that by adding in those namespaces at the top. Uh, Villers B, welcome. Thanks for following. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, cool. And uh, Scott Doc, thank you for following as well. Uh, though I'm not a resharper user. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, I, so I am a big fan of uh, ReSharper. I like Code Rush 2, actually, and I even like Just Code, which is probably the least well-known one of them. Um, there are uh, a lot of good tools out there that help you to do what you're trying to do, and I recommend people use those tools because they will help you get your job done better. Okay, so... Uh, we pass through those. Here are the couple of other things that we need. We need to set uh, help text to something. Uh, and let's look at another uh, implementation of base command. And ooh, which one do we want to look at? Uh, let's look at the hangman command. So this one takes in a repository, passes it in, takes in a hangman game, Okay, so we're going to want to pass in a quiz game object we're seeing because we're going to be a game command, right? Right. So now what does i game command have on it that would is specific to games? Let's find out. It's that. So it gets you a link to a game. Okay. So that something else that needs access to it can check it. Gotcha. So the point of the game command is so that um, when we're doing cooldowns and things like that, we can tell if we're in the middle of a game. So when a game is running, we don't want to have cooldowns active, like any broad cooldown. So for example, um, if we're playing a game of Hangman, which I'll start a game of Hangman so people in the chat can see, uh, when I start this, um, you'll notice that the bot responds back and puts in a message and says, hey, you have a word to guess, and you can see how many letters there are. So now if I want to guess a letter, I might say guess the letter E, and I do that by doing the hangman command again, and I pass in the letter I want to guess. And so it puts it in there. But now if I had a cooldown blocking me from running this command again, then I wouldn't be able to really play the game because it would be like, oh, no, 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 you just ran the hangman command a minute ago. Right. Okay. So, yep, that's the idea. E Eric, feel free to write code while I'm talking about this stuff. So, uh, while I'm in here, uh, why don't you go make an iGame class? And actually, we put this in the wrong place. I'm going to move this first. We're not going to have the quiz command inside of the commands folder. We're going to have it over in games because that makes more sense. So, I'm going to make a folder for uh, quiz because we're going to call quiz a game. And now I am going to paste in our quiz command over here. And then I want to fix... Uh, oh, did it fix its... How oh, good, it fixed the namespace automatically. Thank you, thing. Nice. Uh, so, yep, yep, you guys got the... Uh... Oh, oh, I know the I know the answer. I know the answer. Ha ha ha, I win. <laughs> yeah, that's right, guys. Uh, it's it's rigged. Okay, so Eric, uh, why don't you grab the iGame interface and make an iGame in the same folder as the quiz for a quiz game? Okay. And then we'll tie our code together. So here's what's neat about um, being in live share like this is that I can start writing some code and Eric can go write some entirely separate code. We don't even have to be looking at the same stuff. So that's what makes this then really cool. Um, quiz command, let's go ahead and adjust this to be 
dot games dot quiz. So we're going to do that. Uh, then we need a link to where the base command was now. Now it knows about help text. And hangman command, you'll notice, took in a hangman game in its constructor. So I am actually going to change that to be not a hangman game, but a quiz game, which I am going to get as soon as Eric makes one for me. Yeah, I'm having a little... Can you not make files? Maybe it won't let you make files. I haven't tried that yet. I don't think so. All right, so I will make the file then for a quiz game, and we'll see if you can do it. So we're, we're sort of exploring what VS Live Share will let us do. So I will put that over there. Now you should be able to get to that file, right? You can get into quiz game yeah, now? Okay, I see cool. It. Yeah, everybody see, see Eric's cursor showing up here? Also, I love that your name is Eric Fleming Blog. Okay, it is coming up now. Okay, yep, so what do you cool. want in the, the quiz game here? Uh, make it an I game. And um, let's. I think that sounds good, right? And what what is required to get interface? What is on that interface? Go ahead and implement it, and let's take a look at what we get. Is running. Okay. So basically, the game just is forced to have an is running method um, that we're going to set and that is a getter only that is a property that we need to implement that you can tell there so let's make this a full auto property right so the interface which uh, yeah get rid of your lambda there get rid of the fat arrow also so everybody notice the interface actually tells us that this has to be a property with a getter on it but that doesn't mean that we can't also include a setter. So that's why Eric's going to put a setter on this one, and it's going to be pretty good there. So, Okay, so that looks good. Let's take a look at the Hangman game and see what's in it. So the Hangman game uh, it obviously also has is running, which actually we should probably make the private setter on our is running. Uh, and then it has some things, it has some methods on it like for guessing a word or for when the game is won and things like that and for like a reset game. So these are all the like methods about dealing with the game and the game state. So it's really the game. So um, why don't we jump back into the quiz command and I'm gonna make this one be a property as well. So we're gonna make this uh, property with a type of i game, we're going to call it game, and then I'm going to give this one a private set also. And user role dot um, subscriber, so subscribers can start a quiz game. We'll say. Okay. All right. So there we go. Um, handle command. And we have our game. Okay, so we need a couple of other things. Um, why don't we... Eric, why don't you jump into the other commands and start stealing the code to do operations. So go and look, go grab one of the other ones and grab the operations collection and bring that in here. And I am going to okay. start getting us the properties off of our event arcs. So we have a command received event args object that we have here that's going to get us a couple of things. Uh, J.K. Sherm, uh, Nate sends his regards. Uh, awesome. I, which Nate? I don't, I don't know who. I don't know J.K. Sherm by name, but awesome. Yeah, I don't know. Don't know. I know a couple of Nates, at least at least two, probably more like ten. But thank you for the biddies, much appreciated. Uh, string, we're gonna say uh, actually var, we're gonna say chat user, chat user, no, um, op, and we're gonna say opera equals event args dot arguments. And 
I'm going to add a reference to using system.link. So we're going to add that on there. Uh, get uh, uh, it's element at or default is what we want to call. So now what, what I'm doing here is element at or default is going to take in a number. And what this lets me do is it lets me grab arguments off of here. Um, the only thing about live share is it doesn't have shared curves. A lot of paired programming guys are about ensure that only one person controls the keyboard at a time, and I wish live share had that option propagated. Um, I would agree with that as long as you're in the same file. Um, when you're in the same file, you don't want to both. You don't necessarily want to both be typing. Uh, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do that. Uh, did you grab the operator code, uh, Eric? Is it the from the at hangman word operations? Uh, nope, nope. Uh, go into a command. I will grab it uh, and bring it over. So this is the code that we want. It's this piece right here. So you will see it coming in in a second. There it is. So uh, we're going to include that reference and that reference. And then down here, uh, we need different operations because we don't want those ones. Right. Okay, so um, go and grab this stuff too and bring it over into ours because okay. I think that will be good. So we don't want that. We don't want that command. We want this. Okay, so uh, remove private set on <coughs> game. Have get only. Uh, ooh, good point. Yes, yes, yes. Good point. Good point. Yep, yep, yep. Should totally do that. Don't need it. Good call, Twitchloff. Yeah, so what Twitchloff's talking about is we can do a read only property here. Um, so in an auto property, if you don't include the setter, what that means is that you can only set it uh, on the same line. So I could do it here and say equals new whatever. Uh, alternately, I could put it in the constructor, and those are the only two places you can you can set that value if you do just the get. So that is valid C sharp, which surprises a lot of people. Okay, so uh, handle game playing request. Sounds good. Um, the other one just had the hangman yep. code in there, so we'll probably need to change that. So what we ended up with here is we pulled in, uh, we grabbed the operator, which is what type of thing they want to pass along with their command, and then we're going to grab, uh, do we need argument one? We may not need these two we lines. We don't need this one, yeah. Which we're Because we're going to call it opera right there, there. Uh, and actually, that's a good point. Uh, we will call it argument one because it's not necessarily the operator. Uh, it could have been something else. Okay, so that's a shortcut to grab the chat user, which we can do, which we don't really need. You're right. We can just pass it in there. And actually, I don't think we need the question mark either. So I'm going to chop that. Simplify our code. So. All right, so here's what we're going to do. So this code isn't confusing to you guys. I'm going to give it a quick explanation. So uh, from the arguments that we get from Twitch, so for example, if I were to type, you know, quiz join, for example, um, the word join, so if you're looking at on, on the chat or over there on the left, you'll see it. The word join is argument number one. That's the first argument. So that's what would get stored here is the word join. Uh, we're then going to look at our collection of operations to see if any of them are a join operation. If one of them is, we're going to say that it's the operation we're going to use, and then we will um, try to execute that operation. And if we need to send back a message, we will send back a message. And so that's how that one's going to work. And then um, this would be the default operation. This would be default task. Uh, so I'm actually going to rename this to uh, perform default task for now because I don't know what that is, but it's not exactly handling a a join game necessarily because I think we're going to do a join that way. Um, so I think with no command is going to be an attempt to start a new quiz, uh, start a new quiz game. Does that sound right to you? 
join command to yeah no, no, yeah no, yeah if you if you type um if you type this uh exclamation point quiz i think that would be to try to start a new one yeah because you didn't say what you were trying to do right okay sounds good uh so let's go ahead and do that uh we actually won't need argument one because it's it's it didn't line up it uh we're gonna ignore it in this case i th Ooh, actually well that hang on now that i think be... about it yeah it's only if it's empty would we want to call this one uh would we want to do a join so this needs to be something else well, how did how would that come in from the the chatbot? Would that come in as a null, or would that come in as a empty string? So for the first argument. This so the argue there isn't going to be an argument that's at the first. So first or default is going to give us the default, which is going to be a null. So we'll have a okay. null here in the argument. Um, but what I was actually just thinking. So here's let's let's write these out real quickly. Let's figure out what we want these commands to be. We're going to add it to this. So we're going to add it to this card. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, So we're going to say um, quiz, and we're going to say um, attempts to start the game. Actually, let's do it like this. I am going to say quiz uh, oops, attempt to start a game. Let me just make sure that formatted the way I expected. Yes, it did. Okay. Uh, so that's how we do that one, and then we're going to say quiz um, join, uh, join the quiz game. And yes, I am thinking that you're going to need to join a quiz game. Um, join the quiz, yes. Yeah, see, I said <laughs> the word yes. There we go. Uh, we're going to update that. And then uh, I think once you're in the game, do we want to... Um, uh, maybe well, we have like a forfeit command or something like that to leave the game yeah uh, like a quiz quit or something like that yeah probably um, quit um, what, what would you call this uh, forfeit the game yeah so for join is, is this kind of running so the assumption that we can only have one quiz game running at one time yeah i think we're going to have one quiz game running okay and people are going to join it we're going to ask the question and then um you know people are going to be able to guess the answers uh, and uh welcome tawny bomb uh thank you for following um so i think that's the idea now here's the question yeah. oh i thought oh I, uh, I didn't have those alerts turned off so i apologize if that was really loud everybody um, I'm going to mute that so you guys don't uh, get that shouting in your ears. So I apologize if that was startling to anyone. <laughs> um, because I, I don't know how loud that alert sound is, because I don't know if that's considered part of the audio capture. So, okay, so then the question is, how do we guess? Uh, no louder than Pepsi. Oh, good. Uh, speaking of which. Pepsi <laughs> Okay, sounds good. Glad it wasn't deafening, although the Pepsi was probably deafening. Quit sounds like you're closing the game for everyone. Leave. Ooh, Mike, that is a great suggestion. We're going to go with leave. I like it. Uh, so that's forfeit the game. Now the question is, do we want to answer like this? I don't think we want... To, so what I think we need to do is once you've joined... I want the bot listening to everything you type into chat and consider that possibly your guess. Okay, without putting a command like a... Uh... Yeah, so suddenly, okay. like, that's when you're in the game, it's going to start listening to your guess whether or not you put a command on there or not. I kind of feel like that's the way to do it. I mean, I think it makes it easier for the users trying to do it, so they don't have to remember, like, oh, I have to do... Yeah, exactly. ...quiz command, then... Mm-hmm. We just ne need to then not have penalties for, like, um, incorrect guessing or something like that. That other person's going to have to be quiet. <laughs> yeah, that was... It, it would be... Is there a... 
you uh, get a, a penalty for for guessing it wrong? If you get a penalty for guessing it wrong, then it may be difficult to just put that. Well, to hang on. Are we doing? Are message. we doing multiple choice? Maybe. Maybe we're doing multiple choice. Uh, so. Uh, I'm gonna say this: A, B, C, D. Um, so if we did it as multiple choice, we could do this. Uh, guess. Uh, make your guess. So if we did it yeah. like that, if you guys can see that, then um, then that I think might be the way to do it. Just say, you know, quiz, quiz, join, quiz, leave. So if you wanted to, if you want to forfeit the round, you can. Uh, and the other ones do that. Okay. All right. So the way that that works then is, um, we would want to make it so that these lower three are operations that go based on the word join, leave, and this one will look for letters A, B, C, and D. So let's go ahead and start making those. Uh, so I'm gonna put them inside of, like along with the game. So let's do this. Um, let's see how smart Visual Studio is. Hey, Crimson Green, welcome Mr. Banhammer. Uh, let's see, um, join quiz uh, operation. I like as a name there. Uh, we were passing the repository into these, but I don't think we need that for this one. I think we need the game. Uh, oh, actually, maybe we do. So I'm gonna pass in the repository, and I'm gonna pass in the game. So the join quiz operation will get a repository in a game. And I will go ahead and attempt to get this to make this class for me. We're going to see what <laughs> Visual Studio can do. Yep, go ahead and make that in its own file. Join quiz operation. Very nice. Did it get the, it got the command. Yep. So it knew that it needed to be in there. Okay, uh, so we now have a join quiz operation. Um, now let's jump back here. What's the next one we need? Uh, were you quit? I think or leave? Sorry. Leave. Okay. Uh, so we will call that new leave quiz operation. I'm now what I'm thinking here. Do the next one. Well, you can't make the file, but you are welcome to type it in, and I can control dot it for you. Okay. Um, so here's what I'm thinking while he types that. Um, I'm thinking that what we want to do is um, make it so that when you join a game, uh, you essentially put some uh, put some of your coins, some of your in-chat currency on the line in this game. Um, and then... Oh, hey, you were able to make it. There you go. Yeah, maybe someone was just up with it earlier. Cool. So the concept here is that um, you're going to have to risk some of your coins in order to play the game. If you forfeit, then you'll probably not lose as many points uh, if you lose the quiz. So I think that's like the reason why you would forfeit is because you know you're going to lose. Uh, and then... Um, if you win the quiz, then you're going to gain coins. So you want to stick around if you think you stand a chance of winning. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at these, and we will see um, what is in here. Very nice, very nice. And does this one have it as well? There we go. Okay, so cool. They're all implementing this interface now, so we have a few operations uh, that all have this interface. So let's take a look at join really quickly. So join really is just going to uh, actually I should do this base command operation instead of implementing the interface we're going to implement the base one and you'll see why in a second. The abstract one's a little bit nicer because it already has some helpful pieces in there. So instead of writing the code to check and see if we should run this, we're just going to have the list of operand words that it's going to use. 
So I am going to change this into a getter only auto property that is going to be set automatically to a list of strings. And that list of strings is going to be the words that we accept for a join. So join is going to be one of the words. And one of the other words we're going to use instead of join is enter. Enter, Maybe. yeah. So join, enter, um, you know, those are both ways that you could decide to get into it. Uh, did IntelliCode do anything useful for you yet? Uh, WTF blub, so basically the only thing it's getting me right now is good sorting. Um, that's really about it. So yeah, if you switch us over to that one there also, then that'll work. And yep. uh, let me nuke this code here. And we'll get the same thing going here. Yeah, I forgot when we were doing that that we wanted to use an abstract class for it. So I'm going to jump to the join one, and I'm going to steal my operands code for leave. So now we're going to say leave um, forfeit and eg oops, exit. And now I'm going to be nice. And I don't know if anybody noticed when I typed it earlier, but I spelled forfeit wrong the first time. Um, we're we're going to make sure that the typo, the common common misspelling is also accepted, which uh, is a really smart idea when you're building interfaces for things like this. If, if there's like an IE and EI that someone could switch, <laughs> include them both. Why not? All right, let's see what Eric did for the guess operations. A, B, C, and D. Sounds good. <laughs> that is what I was going to suggest. Yeah, <laughs> just do do a set of letters. Now, is um, this actually, is this case sensitive, or do we need to handle the case when it gets there? Let's take a look at the quiz command. Uh, oh, uh, wait, we said should execute is what it's calling. Let's go take a look at should execute. So this has uh, an implementation that we want to view. So we're going to go to implementation of this, which is here on the base command operation. We have a should execute, and we're saying uh, do any of them match... Uh, so do any of the operand words match? And if they do, we are saying do a case-sensitive uh, comparison with the operand to see if they do. So that that should do what we want. Uh, yes, uh, Crimson Green. I could see people typoing that one. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So we now have the quiz command. What's it do? It calls through to this. Um, what I want each one of these operations to do at first so let's go into each one, and in our try to execute, you'll notice it returns back a string. So I am going to just return back a string that says, uh, you are running the join quiz operation. And I am going to go do the same thing in the other ones as well. Uh, you are running the guess quiz operation. I will get leave. Sounds good. And then I am back, I'm going to go over here, and then we're going to say that we're going to send out the message that it did, and then you are running the, whoops, I meant to do this. So then here we're just going to execute uh, a message sending in here. So this code should tell us right now... Uh, whether or not any of this works. Uh, I assume you got the leave, and we should be yes. good. So I'm going to stop the bot and restart it. For anybody that doesn't know, the bot we're actually running in chat is literally the live one running in my Visual Studio that we're both working on right now. So when th things crash and fail, that is because we are literally <laughs> running this off of code that we are changing actively. So consequently, you want to talk about, you know, non-stable like unstable branches it gets no more unstable than we're literally editing it right now as we go and making changes and running it live for everyone totally safe. test in production well yeah kind of <laughs> uh oh whoops um yeah so that's totally not going to work dev code in production use yeah exactly well, luckily, this is a dev channel, so that's kind of the idea, is that you guys are seeing as we do this. Normally, uh, so consider this. You guys are in the testing environment, not in the production environment. Uh, so I want to go to the module. So the module, where is the core module? There's the core module. This is the one we want. I'm going to go in here, and I need to make uh, a couple of things. So we're going to say, borrow this. 
right to there. We're gonna say quiz command and quiz quiz game. So there we go. As implemented interfaces on the quiz command and as self for the quiz game. So let's just confirm. I think on the quiz commands constructor, yeah, we took in a quiz game. So notice that that was as self. That means it's going to respond to the concrete type, which is what is here. So, okay. So now when I restart this bot, we should actually have a, the quiz game going and it's not going to play the game yet, but at least we've, we've made sure that we've got the structures and commands that we expect it to respond to. And then we can write some tests to figure out how we want them to work. So bot should be running. He said hello in chat. So quiz. Okay, so there's the, said you're running the join quiz operation, what? That seems. Oh, because I didn't change the text. Uh, quiz leave. There we go. Okay, so it can run those. Yeah, I didn't change the text. That's I me. See. see, it's right here. Yep. Yeah, so I will do that. And just to confirm one last time. Oh, yep. Yeah, sorry, Mike. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I'm actually going to change that, so you will be able to. So don't worry about that. Everyone, Mike fixed, fixed. Hang on, let me stop the bot, restart it. Mike is correct. That is not what. Uh, that is not the one we actually want to block. Um. So one thing I've noticed with the the live share is that now that I've started to kind of navigate around and go to my own files and make some updates. Uh, whenever you update or whenever you up open a new file, it's not like I wouldn't expect it to open on mine and like steal the focus, but I, I kind of wish it opened it like in another tab in visual studio mm -hmm. so that I knew like where you were. Cause uh, you opened the, the dev chatter, the module where the, where the auto fact configuration is sitting and it didn't pop up on mine. And I like, I can't see the whole name. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, where is that file? Mm -hmm. um, so that is one thing I kind of wish it, it did. Yeah. Okay, uh, so Twitchlov asked a question in chat, which is, can we register all the commands uh, in one assem... I think you mean in one file, not in one line. And uh, Twitchlov, the answer to that is yes. Uh, so we could have all of those inside of the uh, module inside of this project, the bot project, which is the, the main one that the bot's actually running in. Um, so we could do it all in one and do that. And we can also do uh, scanning and other things like that to do a lot of this. So we can we can do uh, a single line that would basically do most of this work. And we also then don't have to have it in all these other places. So we, so we can do all of those things. Um, one of the advantages of moving some code into these other spots is a couple of things. We can make sure we don't get any additional dependencies by, by having so... Uh, the registration inside the core project can make sure that um, nothing in here can use anything outside of core. So that makes sure that we're not getting any additional dependencies or anything like that that we don't want to worry about, that we, we don't want the core project to know about. So that gets us around some of that. Um, but then additionally, what we're going to do, the reason why we broke it up is we want to already have this mo modular registration uh, because we are going to probably have, um, I'll say, modules that can get configured in. So we want to make it so that someone can decide, hey, yeah, I want to include this module that's not one of the standard ones, and I want to bring this in. And so the only way to do that is by having this modular set up. So and there, so, something I would uh, maybe like to comment on on doing like assembly scanning or something like that with Autofac, uh, or I guess any of them that that can do it is. We ran into something where at one point we had a bunch of different persisters that would write out to like a different log file or to, to a different logging, you know, writing to local or writing out to an external source. Um, and at some point we had done them individually, set them up, and then we had out also set them up with assembly scanning. So we were actually getting double uh, the persisters in there. So it was actually writing everything twice and doing it duplicated because the assembly scanning came in and we didn't know we didn't realize that it had it had actually duplicated the every, all of the persisters that we were trying to use, um, mm -hmm. so that was a fun bug to to 
to track down. But it's just something to, to caution. If you're going to do it, make sure that you want to pull in everything uh, that is in that assembly. So just, just something to caution. I usually like to keep them all separate. It makes the, the file a little bit bigger, but it's you, you know exactly what you're doing. So when you add in something new, you explicitly have to go wire it up in AutoPack. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump back into this. Uh, so we've got our bot running, and it can do all the fun things, like our quiz now says you're running the default, and quiz join says, you know, you're running the quiz join operation, so it can tell all the different pieces that we're running. So now we need to call those, uh, we need to connect these to the game somehow. So let's go over to our game. Uh, da, 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 quiz game, there it is. Okay. So, um, inside of the quiz game, we are going to need a couple of things. The first thing, we know we're going to need a constructor. Um, and in that constructor, we are going to need to have an iRepository. And the reason I know we're going to need this is that we are going to need some data for our quiz game to use. And that's probably going to get stored in the repository. And then in addition to that, we're going to need to be able to increase and in uh, well, actually, ooh, no, we're going to use the currency thing. So for now, this game isn't going to deal with currency yet. So it's not going to mess with it. Let's just wire it up so it works. And not, and for now, you can fight for glory. <laughs> that's what you that's what your quiz for. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so, Eric, uh, why don't you grab the keyboard for a second, and because uh, you're in here too. And um, why don't you get us a method for starting a new game? It's going to be a private method? Uh, public, because it's got to get called by that uh, quiz command. I'll just do void for now, because I don't know what we're going to return. Let me get my cursor out of your face. I don't know what something something has the cursor. Why is it going down there? I have no idea. All right, all right, mate. You may have to take over for this. Uh, I mean, you could just start typing there down goes. there. All right, there we go. Just start uh, typing. Okay. I'm sure it'll fix. I think it's it's good now. Okay, uh, so start game. Uh, we don't want to start the game if it's already running, right? Correct. So while you're doing this, I am also going to start getting the other pieces that we're going to need, which I don't think will mess you up. So I am going to start making a quiz game uh, test folder. And then inside of here, new item called start game should. And you'll see while Eric's doing that, like, I don't really need to watch super closely on the plumbing code. Because the value in pair programming, for the most part, is being able to discuss and figure out what we're doing next. Okay. So looking at this, so his first thing is he checks to see if we're running, and if we are already running, he just returns because we don't want to start if we're already running. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, otherwise, why don't we start the game? So set it to is running equals true. Coded beard, welcome. Dev to hype. We like our dev to hype here. Okay, so now the game can actually start. So that's pretty good. Um, all right, that, that's probably enough. Uh, so let's go ahead and test that. So uh, start game should uh, uh, switch. Uh, we want to do actually. I, I called this start game should. I almost think I want to do uh, is running as our first test. So I'm going to change this to is running should. Um, 
B false uh, by default. So we're going to make a new quiz game. New quiz game and our quiz game equals, whoops, equals that. Okay, so now that's going. Uh, the quiz game needs a new mock repo. Uh, repository. There we go. And then we're going to pass object from that. I need to get two types. We need mock and we need core data. That should get that object. And now quiz game uh, dot is running should now that should be able to find, yep, got fluent assertions, and we're going to say B. So see, here's IntelliCode. Notice those stars it popped up. So it pulled true, false, and B all the way to the top because for people that are using XUnit, those are the most, and, and fluent assertions, mm -hmm. um, those are the top things that they're doing. It's true, false, and B, which makes a lot of sense. So we were saying false. So that is our first test here. I'm going to go ahead and, whoops. Uh, what is the code when I'm using this? I'm just going to run all tests. Now I am not running Visual Studio Enterprise here, so I am not running live unit testing. Um, and I will see if this build fails. I might have to stop the bot, because if it has to compile too much, it won't let us do this. So, give me one second while I stop the bot. Luckily no one was in the middle of a game. Um, we're going to go ahead and build, then we're going to run the tests again. Run all tests. So we don't have a lot of unit tests in here. We need a lot more than we've got, but hey, that one's passing, so we'll call that a win. Let's go ahead and get the bot running again so that you guys have a bot in chat to talk to. So there, the bot's in. Okay, so that is false by default. And Eric, uh, since that one was already passing, why don't you get us our next test here? I assume you're in this file. Yep. Anything about that one? Uh, be true if not running. No, 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 no. be true uh, after starting maybe. Or after starting it, yeah. Yeah. Should I, what what do we call that? I will chop that name. There you go. Yeah. Okay. There, and that'll match our convention. And so, essentially, the convention I go for uh, on naming on these things, for anybody that hasn't noticed, um, I write my test class as, like, such and such thing should, and then um, I either put, like, a be this or return that or uh, do something, and then I do an underscore, and I say given whatever circumstance. So then it's what did we do to trigger it to do that? So like, you know, stuff like that. So here he did pretty much the same thing that we did before, except now he's saying start the game before it. Eric can see which tests are passing failing. Uh, should be able to, yeah. Eric, you can see passing and failing tests on your side, right? Um, I was actually going to ask about that. It didn't like automatically pop up, so let me... Uh, if anything, he might be able to run uh, the tests over there as well, because he should be using the same code I am. I mean, ish. I'm not 100% on, on whether or not he can see that. Oh, is the bot still running? Uh, yeah, the bot is okay. the bot is running, but we should be able to run the tests, I think. Okay, I th think I tried to kick them off if it did not. Uh, did, you, okay. did it kick them off on your side again? Uh, it ran them. It says, yeah, they ran. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay, cool. All right, so that is good. We have those going. And so that is a couple of tests there. So now the third one we would want that we don't have yet, um, so I'm going to put a to-do in here, is um, to do add the test to confirm that the game is 
no is no longer running after it's completed. So we'll call the like end game method and then make sure that it stopped there. But those are basically the three states is like off by default, uh, off by default turns on when the game's going and then turns off when you finish the game. All right, so we'll leave that there. <clears throat> and we'll mess more with this one in a bit. So start game needs to get called by something. Uh, and it's not that one. We want to call this from our quiz command. From the default task? Yeah, default I think so. Task. Yes. I think that's the one we want to do. So let's do that. So why don't you go ahead and run that, write that code, um, and we'll make that one work. Now that is... It's on the game object, so game dot... Okay. Uh, we gotta probably add it to... Uh, ooh, um, so our game is of a specific type. So, um, while you're doing that, let me look at what we did in these other ones. So it might be that we actually have the full type in these other ones. Uh, hangman command, do I have the hangman game? Yes, I do. Okay, so we're going to do the same trick here, which is that we're actually just going to make that I game. Uh, so we're going to make this a quiz game here. And I see, explicitly gonna... telling what kind of game it is. Yes, yeah, so we're going to say quiz game. And then this is just a pass through to that. All right. There we go. Okay. Uh, fixed, and now I'm going to jump back down to where Eric's cursor probably is. There we go. Quiz game dot start game. So uh, why don't we do a couple of checks here first? Why don't we also confirm? So why don't we make this require that you're a subscriber to start a game? So that's on chat user. Yep. And there should be a method on there. Uh, so I don't see your IntelliSense, but there should be one that handles something like, um, yep, is this user in this role or higher? Yep, there you go. And then that should be a method and uh, you should be able to give it the user role dot subscriber. It's an enum. Yep. Yep. So using standard casing there. And then uh, you'll need an extra paren, I think. Closing paren on that. There we go. Yeah, I don't know why this, the... Uh, yeah, I don't know why this is doing that yeah so for anybody that doesn't know vs live share is actually what we're doing so that he can type in my on my screen over here and there, there's still going to be some issues this is now a public preview but it is still a preview so this isn't like uh you know expected to be bug free just yet so we already know there are some issues uh in previous streams we've been running with the private preview so uh we're hoping that this one's better and we know that they are working actively on this and so you are starting a quiz game. Sounds good. Um, why don't we give an else on there to tell them that yeah. they need to be a subscriber in order to run it? That way they know why it didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. And we probably don't need this anymore, so I'm just going to... Uh, what do you want to say? You must be a subscriber to... Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that sounds good. You must be a subscriber to start a quiz game. <clears throat> sounds good. Okay. Uh, so that looks good. So that's the default task. Uh, and then why not uh, have a safety at the beginning? Uh, that is an if the game is already running, respond back and say that there's already a game running. And that's on our quiz game. Yes, it is. It was also on game, but... 
Right. Uh, chat user has start yes, exactly, Mike Sig. Yep, yep, yep. It's like also putting double underscores. I will, I I will get that. to that while he's up there because there's no risk that it's going to get messy um, when we do this. When two people are typing in the same file at different places, nothing can go wrong. <laughs> So this is—it's just another. This is just a feature to get uh, tasks done twice as fast. As both people can type. Yeah, exactly. Well, some things are kind of simple, right? Like what I just did. Right. I should be able to type that while you're doing this. Um, if we—if you can't get away with simple things like that, then LiveShare has some major issues. There we go. Uh, a, uh, a quiz game, uh, let's say, is already being played. Yeah, Joe. How do you like that? And then we don't currently do anything in there, so I'm going to remove your dollar sign unless you wanted to put their name in it. Oh, uh, yeah. That's just a habit now. <laughs> yeah, World Wake. Isn't this, isn't this good? I like it. I like it. I think it, I think it works nicely. So, okay, so... so so then do we need to do the, the is running check on the other side then? Oh, uh, well, it's a safety on that one, right? Okay. So I would I would leave it there. This is this is like a friendly thing about that. Um, this may get pulled in there, right? These might end up being all results within that, and it, like, we, we might make an operation out of it. I don't know yet. We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. For now, we want to have these friendly messages, and... Um, so, uh, I'm glad glad you guys are here, Mike Siggs and Worldwake, because you are awesome uh, QA testers for this. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, or make it an else, uh, Mike. Good point. Stop, exit. There you go. Uh, Mike is correct. We want to else if that, so that we don't, so we only oh, yeah. run one of those. So we could either return or, or else if the thing like that. So either way. Okay, there we go. So it's back in chat. So Mike, would you mind typing exclamation point quiz? That or Worldwake, someone someone who is not a subscriber, go ahead and try that. Because I know that if I run it, it's going to let me start a game. And I want to make sure that you get the message. Sorry, it needs to be a... Uh, ah, you must be a subscriber to start a new quiz game. There we go. Perfect. Nice. And now, when I type quiz, it should start a new one. So Dev Chatter is starting a new quiz game. And now, and now when I, I try it, it... Mike, can you try to do it again? And he should Just... get the same message I do. We should both yep. be told that it's been... It's already being played. Right, because it should have that first yep. statement. So let's just confirm that the game and commands work the way we expect they do. And then we'll be good. Hey, AJ Ukraine, welcome. All right, so that looks like it's probably going to work. Uh, I got your message was not sent because it is identical to the previous. <laughs> well, thank you, World Wake. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, Mike Sigs. Yeah, I forgot about that. Twitch does not let you send the same message. So, uh, so when you do need to do that kind of thing, here's what you want to do. You want to say, like, quiz, and then, you know, an ASDF kind of thing, and then quiz again. And so that's how you sort of twi uh, trick the Twitch chat. So you really? didn't send the same message twice because you put in some gibberish and then sent another thing. So, yeah. Pro tip, <laughs> if, uh, if you need to get around that ever. Uh, okay, so, so that'll get the game started. Once the game is started, we need to start allowing people to join. Yes. Uh, will this be an issue if you answer quiz answer A multiple times? Uh, Mike Siggs, yes, it would be. Um, so when we ask multiple questions, that would run into a problem. Uh, so that's a good point. Um, we'll, we'll figure that one out. We'll figure that one out. As long as there's a 30 second window, it wouldn't be a problem. But well, yes, uh, currently we can't, we're not, we're not going to be asking multiple questions, right? 
we're not going to be asking multiple questions. Uh, yeah, so we're going to ask one question for now, so it, it won't be a problem. Okay. This so feels like a state machine diagram. Yeah, World Wake, it's kind of going to be like, it's going to be a little bit like that. Uh, okay, so uh, these took in game, but I don't want them to actually take in game. I want them to take in something else. We want them to take in quiz game. So let's go to each one of these operations. Uh, and this is going to be... A quiz game now? Yeah, so let's change these to quiz game. I don't see you there. I got that. Did you get the rest of them? Yep, I got, I got, the only one I skipped was the one where I saw your cursor on the thing. Yep, we're good. So, okay. Sounds good. Okay, so now we have access to the correct game. So inside of this one, when we are trying to join, um, we should be able to call that. So we're going to say underscore, oh, uh, wait, that's a good point. We didn't, why didn't, why didn't we name this with an underscore? We should have. I will fix the other ones. Okay, sounds good. That doesn't match our naming convention. So, underscore game, and I want to call a new method called attempt to join. Uh, Paula Bean, welcome. Hi. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Hopefully, everybody's having a good day. Attempt to join. Now, when we attempt to join, I want to pass in uh, event args dot chat user. So, uh, for anyone who's just joining us right now, we are um, yeah, AJ Ukraine. We can edit the same. We can edit lines in the same file at the same time. Oh, and uh, oh no, no, no! You were talking about multi-line edit where I did the yeah. Okay, I know what you're talking about. It's where I did this, where I did you know a selection like this. So for anybody that doesn't know, you can do multi-line selection and editing in Visual Studio now. So now I don't know what Eric sees when I'm doing that multi-line selection there. I would love to know that. I don't see that. anything. Okay, so it doesn't well, even send it. So it actually selects something. So like... All right, I have a bunch of stuff selected. Do you see that? Uh, it, it selected the whole thing, it looks like. It's a little. It does not match what I see on your on the stream right now. Okay. All right. So that's all. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we're gonna pass in the chat user who is attempting to join, and that's all we're gonna pass to the attempt to join method. And what we're gonna do is this. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, it could be internal. I understand that, but I'm gonna make it public because we're likely gonna test this method. So even though it's like, oh yeah, right now you can make it this, and I'm like, no, no, I don't want to. Okay, so um, I am gonna make a list of the current players. So we're gonna make a property that is a list of. Ooh, do we want chat users? We just want their display name. We might just want their display name for now. Are we uh, just going to output, just using it for the output? Uh, yeah, sorry about that, AG Ukraine. I need to add Visual Studio as a whitelisted uh, place that you can link to. Sorry about that. Uh, and uh, welcome, everyone, from the C-Sharp Fritz stream. Thank you. If you are just stopping by, we are doing some C-Sharp code. Uh, so we are also working on a C-Sharp chatbot. Uh, but ours is less focused on moderation, more focused on games and interesting things like that. So we're currently building a quiz game into our bot. So we're going to make it so that the bot will ask questions in the chat room and people are able to answer them. Sorry, what were you saying, Eric? Uh, I was just asking what the the user was only was going to be used for. Like, do we just need the name for output or what do we need the off of the chat user properties? So my concern about keeping the chat user is that we might try to make modifications to that object because it has a bunch of properties. So doing things like 
um, modifying the values on them and I'm worried about getting them out of sync with what's in the database so I think we want to just store the username and then okay. if we need to make changes we'll find them in our database so we'll make it a list of string and we'll make it the um, uh, joined uh, Why don't we call it uh, players, uh, current current player names? Yeah. Uh, Worldwick, C Sharp Fritz was programming nudity checks into the bot uh, using machine learning. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um, basically, he had Scott Kate on his stream, and Scott Kate uh, had, has this little like vision API thing that he was messing around with. And essentially what it does is it looks at an image and, and, it, and it uses um, some other services that it calls out to that will tell him what is in that image. And they were going to put that in the bot so that if someone linked to an image in their stream, they could say what was in it. So, okay, so I don't want this to bomb when this list is empty at the start. So we're actually just going to start it off with an empty collection. So when, when you create this class, it is going to have an empty string uh, an empty list of strings and then down here why don't we say if current player names contains oh and I you know this doesn't do a string insensitive compare does it son of a gun so I guess I'm gonna use link because that's basically all I can do here. And I'm going to say, we're going to say anywhere x dot, and now I want to say equals insecure chat, uh, whoops, chat user dot display name. So we're going to do a case insensitive comparison mm -hmm. using an extension method that we created. And that's how we're going to check this. Um, that's a, um, <laughs> breath login. Yeah, Paula Bean, the, the problem is alcoholics can have a little bit of trouble with that one. So, okay. Uh, so there we go. We have this set up. So we're going to say, if you're already in here, so if it already contains you, then we want to return you back out of here and be like, WTF, what are you doing in here? Yep. Um, which we'll figure that out in a second, because we, we, we're going to need return values of some kind in here. Yeah, um, yeah the red 4001. We're, we, we like it. It should work well. Uh, and then what do you want to do next in here, Eric? Um... But we are using Visual Studio Live Share the Red. Eric, type type on this line where I am here. See? Look, no hands. Woo! <laughs> All right, so the first thing we're doing is we're, if they're already in here, we're going to return. We'll return something, Yeah. Uh, whatever that may be. So then the second, I mean, we just want to go ahead and, and join them? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So add them to the collection. So here's the challenge we're going to run into, is we're going to need it, immediately need to lock on this, too. So I do like that IntelliCode. That brings us add all the way up with the star. That is, that is nice. Yeah, because add's the most important one. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it, it definitely is. I didn't think it was going to catch my attention as much as it did. But yeah. I'd like it yeah. if they, if they you know, use some kind of color indicator or something like that. Um, yeah. And I'm also hoping, I don't know how IntelliCode works, but I'm really hoping that IntelliCode um, starts looking at your common usage uses and not just the most common ones in the community. So, yeah. um, for example, uh, what he was talking about is this. So notice when I when I hit this dot here, um, it comes up with those starred ones are like the most commonly chosen options. So, for example, when I have on a list, add, to array, count, remove, and add range are apparently the most common uh, calls that people make on that. I notice that none of those are extension methods, so I do now wonder whether IntelliCode will include the extension methods on something. So that is a that is a good question that I now have. Okay, 
So we're going to add them to the collection. Yep. Um, okay, so that will add them in, and then that will do that. So then we start the game. Okay, so we're going to need a couple of other things. So I'm also now realizing this. So when we start the game, we're gonna want to we're gonna want to probably give like some kind of time window for people to join. Um, okay, so I'm gonna create a new method here, and I'm gonna say set um, chat. Do we have any serializable handling of commands? I'm not sure what AJ Ukraine is talking about. Um, set join. Uh, Actually, let's make it uh, create join game join window. Does that, does that make sense? I want to create a window of time where people can join the game. Okay. Sort of what I'm thinking here. So, in order to do this, we're going to need a couple of things. Because I was realizing as we were doing the joining that we need to... Uh, that we only want a certain, like, we don't want people to be able to join after the question's been asked, right? We want them to join, then we'll ask a question, then they answer. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, so, um, I automated, uh, actually, let me make sure I get the right name here. And, uh, Mordzuber, welcome, thanks for following. Uh, auto, automated action system, there it is, this is the one we want. So I am going to, inside of our quiz game, take in an I automated action system, which I'm going to call automated action system. There we go. So we're going to be using that. And then uh, let's create a repository field, and we're going to create one of those as well. Okay, so we now have an automated action system. So automated action system is basically, um, it's a class and an interface that I created for use inside the bot that the basic idea is that you can add a, an automated action of some kind to it. So it could be something like an automated message that it'll send out into the chat. So like that hello and welcome that just posted in chat, man, that was convenient timing. That's sent out by the automated <laughs> action system. So essentially it's, I want to have a message that just goes out periodically. So I create an object that is just set to do that kind of task. And I can toss that in there, uh, have it run once or, you know, and other things like that. And I don't have to think about how that works. I can just say like, yeah, give this to the automated action system, let it do its thing. Um, so over here, what I can do is I can say automated action system and then add action. And uh, Eric, I don't know how long you were planning on being here today, so um, my, my guests don't always stick around for the whole stream, but I, I wanted to make sure that I reminded him of the time in case he does need to get going, because I think he's been here for about 90 minutes now. Uh, and I don't know how long he was planning on sticking around, but you're welcome to stick around for the whole time if you like. Cool. Yeah, I got about uh, five minutes left. So. Okay. So let's keep chugging along then. Uh, so you'll notice that the types that we get are things like an I interval action is what this takes. So uh, we don't just want an I interval action. So they have an is it time to run and an invoke. And that's literally all it is so that the automated action system can just say, hey, are you ready to go? Okay, cool, go. And then that's how the automated action system works. Let's go okay. take a look at an implementation of one of these. Uh, so uh, a one-time callback action. I think is what we're going to need, but we also need an automated message. So automated message is one of the ones that we need. So this is our automated message. This is going to be our reminder. Uh, so using messaging, and then this one I am going to... I updated our unit tests, by the way. Okay, cool. Uh, I assume they broke due to something. Uh, when we added the new parameter in the constructor. Okay, we don't have the chat client here. I need to pass that in. Uh, so var uh, auto message equals new. Whoops. New auto message. There we go. 
uh, C. Uh, and uh, the Thirsty Dev, welcome, thanks for following. And on a more detailed level, I suppose, are the commands using their own threads. Uh, in what environment will this program? Oh, uh, he asked a question. Uh, commands are strictly consequent. Oh, um. Ah, got it. You mean like, are they, yeah, running a serial versus parallel? Uh, so our commands, um. Uh, that is an interesting question. Um, so the short answer is they're not in serial. Uh, they're, they, they can be run, we can have multiple run before previous one is finished, uh, for example. Um, so. Yeah, so we, we can have multiple games running, but we would have to set up some way to identify which game, like, someone wants to join, like a, you know their instance ID. Yes. So that sure. when you join, you join that game, and then from from then on, your user would be added to that game. So when you do the guess or, or the leave or anything like that, like you're tied to that specific quiz. So you could probably only be a part of one quiz. Um make it a little bit com more complicated after that but well I think this is probably a good time for me to ship off here sounds good all right uh, thank you for stopping by Eric and uh, thank you for pairing with us uh, anything you want to say to everybody before you leave no, this uh, this has been fun. I would I would love to come back and and write some more code and work on some some other of these cool projects. I love watching and um, you know thanks for having me. Yep, thanks Eric. Take care, uh, everybody. Eric's information is up there if you want to check him out on Twitter. Uh, F Fleming eighteen, so E Fleming eighteen, right there. Yep, I'm also in the the Discord channel too. So if you would ever have any questions, um, hit me up in there and or Twitter, or whatever. And I'll definitely get back to you. And he mentioned our Discord, which I just linked in chat also. So take care, Eric. <laughs> Thank All you, right. Twitch Love. All right, see you, Eric. See you guys. Thank you. And I'm turning the alert sounds back on and the audio capture back down, everybody. Uh, and now we get background music. And I am going to get out of that screen. We're going to go back to this one. There we go. Bye, Eric. He's gone now. Twitch off with the big old cheer again. Uh, but I guess they will be handled without blocking each other. Yeah, so if two commands are sent at the same time, uh, they're both going to be executed directly. We're not putting them in a queue yet. So our plan, AJ Ukraine, is to make commands... Uh, happen sequentially because it's a little safer so I, I probably want to switch to that eventually where when the bot receives a command it does them in the order it receives them every time so it's you know uh, very controlled which will make a lot of things about the system a lot safer uh, but we're not doing that yet um, I actually want to make all of those things be handled based on an event in a queue so essentially all operations the bot does I want triggered by a queue so we'll get to that eventually um, so right now what we do is in the spots where we know we're going to have concurrency issues, we use locking. So it's just standard locking in C sharp is all we're using right now. Um, so Worldwake, we're not directly spinning up any additional threads. The challenge is that, um, the thread, essentially some of the things we're allowing... Uh, so we do we do occasionally spin up another thread, but we're allowing the bot to decide to pass execution around to other parts of the code. It's kind of hard to explain, um, and I don't really want to dig into all that right now because I'm more interested in working on the quiz uh, game. So, uh, cool. So sharing is done, and we're going to end that collaboration session. There we go. So we're no longer sharing. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, gl glad to uh, answer questions. 
Okay, so I'm actually thinking that we don't want to do... I think I want to do a delayed message action, not an automated message action. I think that is the problem I was running into there, is that I chose the wrong one. So let's jump back over to our quiz game, where I don't want to add that, I want to add this. Uh, chat clients. So we want delayed message, we don't want an automated message, because an automated one's the one that's just going on its own all the time. So our delay in seconds is going to be 30 seconds, uh, which we'll pull that out as a constant. Uh, but for now we're putting it in here. We're going to pass in the chat client we want to send it on. Uh, so we're going to send a message now, and then we want to send another message in 30 seconds warning everybody to join the game. Actually, maybe we'll send it in yeah, 30 seconds, uh, and we'll say uh, you only have uh, 30 seconds left to join the quiz game. Uh, type uh, join Wait, uh, what is it? It's uh, type What do we want to say? We want to say type exclamation point quiz join to join the game. There we go. So that's going to be the message that's going to go out when we do that. So we want this chat client to get passed into the game start call and then this can get passed in here. So now all that should work. Now the action that we put in is this one. Uh, so this is our uh, last minute, uh, last, uh, yeah, last, maybe this is a join warning? Join warning, we'll call it. There we go. So that's our join warning, so that you don't have much time left to join, so we'll call it that. Uh, let's see. So next thing we want to do is, so we gave him a join warning. Now there's another type of action that we want to do, which is a callback, one-time callback action. So this is a very special one. This one, the delay in seconds is going to be 60 seconds. Uh, so this one is basically going to be when all that time is up. This was your window to join. Um, so this is not going to do, sorry, that's not going to do quotes. This is actually going to call a, an action. So the action we want to call here, so this is an action that doesn't take in any parameters. So we're going to say ask, uh, let's see, start asking questions. So that's going to be our method, it's going to be start asking questions. Um, We're also going to connect our automated action system here. So there we go. And then this needs to be a method. So we now have a start asking questions method and there's two things I want to do here. So in start asking questions, uh, we can actually get rid of, we can do our little method cleanup here. So, uh, we have, so join warning is a special action that we want to deal with, so we need to change this to be a field. That's a good point. Um, So I was going to make this thing get cleaned up in here, but I may not get rid of it just yet. Um, okay. Alright, I'm going to look at this for a second. Does this, okay, this max values itself. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about these yet. We're not going to get rid of them. So I should clean those out. I'm not going to do it just yet. Um, to do uh, clean up the 
uh, automated actions we created. So the reason I don't feel bad about that is we can make the, we'll just add extras. So uh, we're gonna clutter a little bit. We'll fix it later. Um, I'm gonna let the, those sit around for now. So we're not gonna clean up our automated actions that we're starting. And how's the audio, guys? Can you hear the uh, background music playing and everything now? You should be able to. Okay, so... Uh, create game join window. Uh, so I'm going to make another boolean that's kind of like this one. Uh, private bool... Uh, game is joinable. Actually, we're going to call it um, questions being, uh, uh, let's see, our, uh, wait. Question asking started. Have I mentioned that naming things is difficult? Have I said that before? I don't think I've said that before. <laughs> uh, question asking started. Um, false. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is I want to make a private bool and uh, is game joinable. And this is going to be uh, is is running and not underscore questions so create game to start asking questions so the first thing we do here is we say uh, we've started asking questions now when someone joins uh, we need another check, which is if underscore uh, is game joinable. We're going to say if the game is not joinable, return. So there we go. So that's what we're going to say. We're going to say attempt to join the game and we're gonna say if you're already in it we're gonna return and if the game is not joinable then you're also gonna return this is not gonna be void forever we're gonna have some kind of result in here that we're gonna pass back so some kind of object so that we can send back the data of what happened even if all it is is a string right and like we might just do like a, a tuple tuple whatever you want to call it with like a, a succeeded and a string to send back so something along those lines, and then we'll see how that works. So start asking questions is there. And then um, this is such an enjoyable stream. I really uh, have to commend this work you're doing. It's the epitome of edutainment. <laughs> World Wake, thank you. I really appreciate the compliment, and I'm glad, you're, uh, I'm glad you enjoy the stream. I hope everybody does. Okay, so we want to start asking questions. Um, uh, okay, so I'm going to get us a commit here, actually, because we have a couple of things we've added. But before I do that, I'm going to make sure the tests are passing and that everything's building and running as it is so far, which I understand it's not done, but I do want to make sure that it's working. See, we have... So start game no longer takes nothing. It now needs a chat client, I think. Yeah. We might want to put that in the constructor. I'm not sure yet. So let's go ahead and build this again. Get it, get the bot running. So we've got the bot running again, as long as it doesn't bomb out. Now let's go ahead and run our tests. So we're going to just go ahead and run all the tests. And the bot's back in the chat. So we're going to... Whoops. Yeah, of course this failed. Uh, start game. Um, new mock of... 
uh, an iChat client. And we're going to say dot object on that. So we just need a mock of that. We're not really going to use it for the tests. So let's go ahead and run the tests again. So we're going to do all the tests. And then over here, just to test things, I am going to run the fritz command. And it says, let's all wear hats. So uh, I don't have a hat to grab and immediately put on. But either way, we're going to pretend that we're all wearing hats. Because Jeff Fritz is an awesome guy. Um, and he wears hats, like all the time. Okay, so we got all that stuff running. Let's clear up the usings and let's jump back over to the quiz game. Let's try the quiz game. So that should start a new quiz game. In 30 seconds, we're expecting the bot to uh, do some. Uh, and it said you are running it. So current player names and that. So. I don't know if it added me to the list or not, actually. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, okay, so I want to change a couple of things. First off, um, I kind of feel like the quiz game needs to run in one chat at a time and not be in multiple chats. Ah, you only have 30 seconds left to join the quiz game. See, so that's it. That's the automated message that we set up that chimed in in the chat there. So that's how that piece works. Um, so let's give this thing... Uh, well, what did we do in our other ones? Let's take a look at our other games. Did we give this just a, a chat or does it get passed in every time? Guess the word, chat client. Game one, chat client. Okay, we're just passing it in every time. All right, so we'll do the same thing. We'll, we'll pass in what it is. Start game, chat client, start game. So create window, chat client. And then what that means is that we need to call this a little differently. We're going to do this. So chat client. Convert, uh, because it's a, oh, uh, whoops, that's my bad. I know I did this somewhere else. There it is. No, that one's not it. Uh, welcome, uh, JJDiz46, and I apologize for butchering your name, but I hope I'm at least close. Thank you for following. Hopefully, you're enjoying Dev Chatter. Uh, okay, so. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, sorry, that was my bad. I put that in the wrong spot. I'm smoking something, guys. I don't know what it is, but it's it's powerful. Chat client. Put that in there. There we go. Okay, yeah, see? Helps if you don't do crazy stuff. Don't be a crazy person. Crazy doesn't work. All right, so we are going to go ahead and say send message. And uh, we're going to go ahead and say who is in this game. Uh, starting the quiz now. Uh, our competitors are... Doo -doo. And then we're going to say this. We're going to say string dot join. And then the first part of that is going to be a comma space. And then the next part is going to be uh, current player names. Close parens. And then there we go. So that should put in everybody's name into chat. And we should. 
heist is on when quiz is on? What are you talking about, Janiscu? I, I didn't I didn't combine these, did I? There are heists and and quizzes both in this in this game. Hopefully, I didn't mess that up. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and restart this really quickly. Now, the reason I want to do this so quickly is that I want to be able to test that this stuff is actually working, that it's sending through, and everything's wiring up. So let's go ahead and do a quiz. So Janisku, hop in the quiz game. Um. So quiz join. You know, I really should print out that message here. Attempt to join. So I will send it out here as well. So send message. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, chat user dot display name. Join the game. Uh, Meister Hartvig. Uh, Thank you for joining the uh, quiz game, and WTF Blub, and Janisku also, and uh, Defury Man. Yes, yes, uh, you have 30 seconds left for starting the quiz game. Oh, uh, yeah, you gotta do a join there, uh, uh, Fury. Uh, starting the quiz game, our competitors are Dev Chatter, WTF Blub, Janisku7, and, and uh, Meister Hartvig. So there we go. Uh, so looks like it actually gets us in, so we can all be in the game together. And now if we try to join, um, it should not include us in that list. So if someone tried to join multiple times, I think it would prevent it. But that's what we're going to find out. Uh, once I restart this and we try it again. So now I've added that. So-and-so joined the game. It says who our competitors are. So let's do this. We're going to toss these messages in up here. So... Uh, let's see, you are already in the game, person. And then on this one, uh, is the game joinable? Um, uh, um, uh, the game cannot be joined right now there we go okay so we're gonna say that now let's go ahead and take a look and see how this does nope we have a compiler error because I added the chat client to this so that is event art uh, wait Um, that's a good point. Do I not have the chat client when I'm in here? That's a good question. I might not have the chat client when I'm in here. Hmm. Right, because that's not how I do it. I do it like this. That's why. I remember now. We don't pass the chat client in. We do this. I just remembered why, because I set it up like this, so that we do these now. And this is just a return. There we go. I remember how this code works. I've been in here before. I've done this. There we go. Let's go ahead and run this. Mm 
Yay, the bot's in here. Success. Uh, let's try that just to confirm. Yep, it's in here. Okay, so we're going to now start up a quiz game. We're going to go ahead and join the game. And I'm already in this game. There we go. And Meister Hartvig is in here as well. And anybody else want and uh, type something else and then type that same command. Type that same command in again, Meister Hartvig. Yeah, there you go. Yep, just like that. So you get it as well. So there are 30 seconds left to join. Uh, when those 30 seconds are up, we're going to try joining again and hopefully get the other message. But while that's going on, I am going to go add some more quiz game tests. Uh, so, we're going to add a new class and we're going to say attempt to join should. And then this is going to be a public class with a fact in it. No, a fact in it. Fact called test one. X unit. Uh, the game cannot be joined right now. Thank you, WTF Blub. Uh, and looks like that did exactly what we wanted. Okay, so here is what we're going to do here. We want to say attempt to join should uh, block user uh, should uh, prevent joining given uh, already competing user and then what are our other tests we're gonna do I'm just gonna put in their names real quickly here so prevent joining given already competing user and then next one is given uh, game not started and then next one is questions being asked And then it should only allow it when it's not those cases. Uh, given given new user uh, during join window. Okay, so there we go. Uh, I think that makes sense. So we're going to make tests for those. So let's go ahead and make a new quiz game. Yep, using that. Bar game equals new quiz game. And then this is going to take in a new mock. Yep, that's the right mock. I repository. I'm actually going to steal this from the other one, now that I think about it, because why not? So there is our quiz game object, and I need to include a couple of references for this. Wish I were running ReSharper right about now, and you know what I'm going to do, everybody? Hang on one second. I am going to restart Visual Studio, because when I restart Visual Studio, I will suddenly have ReSharper. The only reason I didn't do it before is because we were live sharing with Eric and I didn't want to break the live share and have to reconnect him in, because that would be a pain in the rear. But this time I can restart and I should have ReSharper now because I enabled it last time. Now Visual Studio is going to yell at me because ReSharper is what's making it take so long to start. So Visual Studio is going to be like, you should disable ReSharper, and I'm going to be like, well, I agree that ReSharper and Visual Studio need to learn to work together better so that they don't end up with, uh, I read, I read that whole thing. You guys saw that, right? Yep, yep, yep. There you go. Uh, so I kind of sit there and I go, maybe, maybe Visual Studio and JetBrains should actually work together a little bit more instead of fighting so much because realistically they're both trying to help me write code. So let's, let's work together, guys. That's what we're doing here. Bunch of 
men and women coming together to write some code having a good time all right so put that in each one of these and then what I want to do is this I want to say quiz game whoops quiz game dot uh, attempt to join new chat user and we want some kind of result so our result equals that and then result dot should be and then what I expect it to be so here's what we're gonna need to do we're gonna need to make special result objects for these if we're gonna wanna make this work right so let's do this paste 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 <clears throat> okay so in this one this is an already competing user so what we're gonna do is this I'm gonna copy this line we're gonna have it join twice with the same user and so our second result should be this which means that I'm gonna extract this out as our chat user right there display name equals Brandon which I understand that's not my display name it's dev chatter on here but you get the point uh, and then the next thing we want to do is on this one, we want to say display name equals. Actually, I'm going to do this. Quid dot new grid. Yep, that's the that's the one. Quid dot new grid dot two string. That's right. My user's name is a quid. Which is a nice way of just getting a random string that I want to use. So I want to get a random string, so I'm just going to use a quid there. Uh, and basically that's to avoid the problem that if someone were to make this a field and not get state right, and we were using the same game object between tests, that would be bad. Um, but I would like it if my test still worked most of the time. So I'm trying to make my test a little bit uh, refactor proof, so that if other people mess with stuff, I don't get screwed over by it. Okay, so clearly... Um, that string that we're returning is not going to be good enough. So what I am going to do is I am going to jump back over to our quiz game. Attempt to join is currently just sending back a string. Well, that isn't what I want. I want to make this a little bit smarter. So what I am going to do is this. Um, I am going to... Uh, results. <clears throat> We're going to go over here to the heist class. Um, and you'll notice it has a join game result, which is pretty cool. Huh? Huh? Join game result? Yeah. Y'all like that, huh? Well, turns out we were sort of planning for this. Uh, so. I want to take this and actually just move it up to games. So it's no longer part of heist. Whoops, let me stop the bot real quickly here. Yep, bot needs to leave in a hurry. We are going to comment out those for a second just so we can confirm that we can compile this code. There we go. Just had to deal with the uh, namespace change that I did there. Okay, cool. So now when we do an attempt to join game in this, so you'll notice something that we had been planning on doing for a while is we want to have this concept of a joinable game, uh, and we're probably going to extract that out as some kind of base or an interface or something like that. We want to have this idea that you can join a game, and the way that we're going to do that is by having these join methods and these join results. So we need a join game result, which we're going to go ahead and use, and these have all these nice equality comparers and everything like that so that it can actually do it. We're going to go over to the quiz game, and we're going to give it a set of 
uh, join game results that it can use. So actually, I want to see where we made these and what we called them. So I made a static class in uh, just out in the same file as but separate from the heist game so I'm gonna do the same thing here in the quiz game for now we're gonna say uh, quiz join results oh and it had a heist role uh, which I don't know if we oh uh, that might have been specific for that one I'm not sure either way um, this didn't really have anything about that, so that's fine. Got it. I understand now. Okay, so we want a... Uh, already in... already in game result you're already in this game so and so uh, and you aren't a multitasker uh, okay so I like that one uh, that one I don't know what it is um, so we're gonna say um, game already uh, playing Result. Sorry, um, this not the time to join. Um, not join time result. So we're going to call that one. And then success join result is going to be our third one for now. And we're saying we don't need to pass in the role. We're not going to use that. We're going to say display name. Uh, so we're going to put this in there. Okay. So now what we're going to do is this. Instead of that, we're going to return... Um, quiz join result dot success join result and then we're gonna pass in this string here just like that uh, oh whoops no we're not we're just gonna pass in chat user dot display name that's what we're doing okay cool got it uh, I am no longer insane everyone um, my brain is now working again so congratulations uh, already in game result is going to be return uh, quiz join results dot already in game result and we're going to say chat user dot display name and then um, we're going to take that uh, yeah I like that method better and then on this one Uh, yep, yeah, that looks good. Uh, so now we're gonna call this one not join time result. So there we go. Uh, Hawkbird Gaming, welcome. Thank you for following. Hopefully you're enjoying Dev Chatter. Um, oh, uh, I meant to return this type. We're gonna return a join game result. Uh, you were trying to return a set of things. Yeah, WTF love. Yeah, 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 I got it. I got it. Stream delay. Stream delay. Yeah. I just pasted in the wrong thing. Okay, so that ought to work nicely. That's basically... These are basically just the static helpers that we're going to use for that. And then what we can do is this. If I hop over here now, we can say this. Uh, da -da -da. Dot... Uh, already in game and we're gonna say chat user dot display name uh, 
FDE, uh, FDE, welcome, thanks for following, hopefully you're enjoying Dev Chatter, and uh, I apologize for not making an attempt on your name, because uh, it looked difficult. Um, but if you tell me uh, how to pronounce it or something like that, I will do better next time. Because at a quick glance, I didn't figure it out. So I am going to do a couple of these. I'm just going to paste these down for now, and then we will fix in a second. Okay, so this is the one that we want to allow joining. So this is success. So in the success one, so we're saying this should be a success one given this. And in order to make sure that this game is startable, we need to do this. So we want to say quiz game dot start game. And I am going to mock a chat client in here. And then say dot object. Uh, it is Portuguese. You can call me FDE as you already did. Sounds good. Yeah, see, I took a guess that that was probably how, probably what I wanted to go for. Yeah, we, we get people from a lot of different places, and I see names, and I'm often like, I'm like, ooh, okay, what's that language probably? So, um, and then I try to guess what the pronunciation's based, what it is based on that, but with some weird handles people use on the internet, it's hard to tell what their, <laughs> like, what language it is. Even if even if you know the language a little bit, so it's a tough guess. Uh, given questions are being asked. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring that up there, and then our automated action system. Uh, all right, so we're gonna have to do a little trick to make this one work, um, which I'll show you what we're gonna do with that one in a second. Um, this is not an already in game, so this is the not uh, not time one, and the, this is a not time one also. And then this one, we need to start this game up here before we attempt to join. So start the game, two people attempt to join, uh, and then when they call the automated action system in that one, we're going to ignore it and not do anything about it. And these ones we are, so this is the game isn't started, so this one should fail. Uh, this one this one we called start but it's so okay here i'm gonna run the tests it'll make sense once i run the tests uh so let's go ahead and run all these so one of these i think is gonna fail oh whoops sorry i forgot back here we're expecting this to be a string uh so this is a join game result uh that we get back from this And we're gonna say dot message for now, and and we'll worry about this in a moment. So this is gonna have to handle this in some way, but this is fine for now. We're just gonna return back the message. So uh, let's go back in here, and we're gonna run these tests again. Let's see what the tests do. Assuming these tests, okay, one failed. That's that's what we said was gonna happen. We expected one to fail. So hooray, I guess but also kind of a game over at the same time, so I don't know, because... Okay. Result should be not join time. So that's this one. So the questions aren't actually being asked yet. Well, here's why. We need to extract this as our... Um, this is our mock auto action system six km five twitch what does six km five mean I have no idea what you're talking about so here's what I want to do I want to say setup now what setup does here is it says setup for this object to be called and we will we're going to expect an add action to be called and um, we need to get this object um, now if I remember correctly yeah we can do a callback
action of type T. Uh, I don't remember how to do this. Um, oh, this is tricky. This is tricky. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm not going to mock this. I'm going to write a fake. Because I can't remember how to do this with a mock right now. So I am going to make a quick fake, and we're going to use that for now. And then uh, we'll figure out how to do it with a mock later, because I don't remember. Um, we're going to make a class uh, fake action system. That's what we're going to call it. In our fake action system, we're going to make it implement this interface. And then I am going to implement the missing pieces, which is fine. Those ones are going to throw not implemented exceptions because I'm not actually using them. Uh, it's just going to be this one. I just need the action that was passed in here. So what I am going to do is this. I am going to make this uh, a public field. Uh, and actually, I am going to make it a get set uh, new to this channel uh, is it prim primarily about dotnet hawkbird gaming um, so most of what we do here is dotnet and dotnet core um, but we are not exclusive to that um, we generally like development uh, so I'm gonna be bringing on some guests that do some JavaScript stuff and things like that I'm primarily a c-sharp developer I work mostly with dotnet um, and dotnet core but um, Obviously, we're not exclusive to that, so we like software development in general, so if there's a cool thing, we're going to use that cool thing and play around with it, uh, regardless of what the technology is. So, uh, hopefully you like programming of all sorts, Hawkbird Gaming. <clears throat> uh, UPS phone in pocket, just listening while making dinner. Ah. Okay, so here's what I am going to do. So, I said I was going to make a new fake. So we're going to make a new fake action system, and I am going to store this, there we go, uh, I, I'm going to say TC, uh, for uh, my, my guess on that name, but welcome, TC86, welcome, thanks for following, and uh, if that is pronounced like Teak or something like that, let me know, and I will try to get it right next time, but uh, hopefully everybody's enjoying Dev Chatter. Uh, if you are, uh, the reason you want to click the follow button is so that you get notified of our next stream where we're going to be doing other cool stuff as well. And I apologize for anybody who came in here and noticed that it said pair programming. Eric was here before, but obviously can't stick around for the whole stream. Uh, so uh, we had Eric Fleming up in the top corner up there for a good 90 minutes. Uh, clean Code. Um, yeah, so Clean Code is a fantastic book if people haven't read it. There are a lot of books that I would actually recommend people read. Uh, especially, um, there are a number that I would really recommend to like, uh, like an intermediate developer to a more advanced developer. There are a number of books that I'd highly recommend for uh, early developers. Most of the stuff I would recommend is tech books. And there are a couple of things like Clean Coder is actually still a good one, even for the junior developer. So Clean Coder talks a lot about professionalism, actually. Um, not just the actual code that we write, but like what are good things to be doing as a as a developer so automated action system start game so after we start the game is when we expect to have this so I am going to get the interval action and say invoke on that so we are gonna run that action so that should start the questions So now let's go ahead and run these tests and we're going to see what happens. So cross your fingers everybody. <laughs> we win. That worked. Awesome. Okay, cool. Uh, so I am going to go ahead and start up the bot. We're going to get the bot running here. Uh, we're going to try a couple of, we're going to try our joining stuff again because it's a little bit nicer and it's tested now. So. We're going to say start a quiz game. I'm going to attempt to join the game, which I did. 
Uh, why don't some of you attempt to join it also? You're already in this game, and you aren't a multitasker. Okay, cool, so it blocked me from joining. Uh, anybody else want to join the game? Um, there's no game yet, because it doesn't actually ask us our questions, but this is sort of testing out our join functionality. So now that we have this, you'll notice I was reusing pieces out of our heist game. Um, and the reason why is because we're making a handful of games that are all joinable, and I want to take these joinable games and extract out this concept of a joinable game so that they're all leveraging the same code. And so this stuff that I'm writing right now, we're hopefully not going to have to do. So when we built the heist game, that was sort of our experiment for it. It was like kind of make this work. And now in this one, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to pull code out of it, and whatever matches up that I yanked out of that one, that's what's going to be part of our joinable game, if that makes makes sense to everybody. Uh, so starting the quiz now, and our competitors in that. So uh, if we attempt to join now, uh, it says I'm already in this. Someone else try to join. You should get... So I got yelled at because I'm already in the game, but someone that is not part of this game, so not me or WTF Blub, uh, go ahead and do a quiz join, and it will hopefully give you the message that it's not the time to join the game right now. We just did this with unit tests, but we should see it here, too. Hey, thanks, the Baker 58 Much appreciated. That worked perfectly. So, awesome. Uh, so the bot is doing exactly what we expect there. So this is a great time to get this stuff committed. Um, so this is adding a quiz game with join functionality. So, new branch, Benrick slash quiz game. Okay. Commit those to that branch and publish it to GitHub. Uh, quiz leave. Hey, nice job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D WTF Blub forfeits the match. I am the winner by default. Uh, we could actually do that kind of functionality where uh, if there's only one player remaining, they automatically win. Uh, but when starting, for example, if there's only one player, they don't win. Uh, would both seem to make sense to me. Okay. Uh, so, that seems to work. Uh, and for anybody that didn't realize this from what I just did there, all of our code is out on GitHub, so if you want to contribute, look at, or see anything after the stream, you can find it all there. Uh, yeah, that looks good. We are going to call that working. Attempt to join should. Fake action system. That actually worked pretty nicely, because the, the mock for that was going to confuse the crap out of me. So I, that's why I used a fake for it. So that's why I point out, there, there are times where a fake is better than a mock, and that's one of them, because everybody understood what I did there. Uh, whereas if I wrote that with a mock, everybody would have been like, wait, what? How's that work? I don't get it. Okay, uh, join quiz operation. We don't want to throw a not implemented. We want to put some help text in here. So this is um, type uh, quiz join to join the quiz game. Um, backslash quote and backslash double quote. All right, um, now let's jump to our other one. So we're going to say leave to forfeit the quiz game. And this one, uh, type quiz A to guess choice uh, A. in the quiz. I think you can figure out the rest. We're just going to go ahead and put in the snarky thing there. Hopefully, hopefully you can figure out the rest of that from that. So we passed in the repo in the quiz game, but we might actually not need those in there. I just thought it highly likely that we would, so I passed them in, but we may not, so I might get rid of those. We'll see. 
Okay, uh, questions asking, question asking started. Uh, we assign, did I assign, I thought I assigned that to true. Right there, ah, but we never set it to false. Because we, and we never check it for anything, really. Okay, so when we start asking the questions, um, w this is where we start actually playing the game a little bit. Let me, uh, um, heading, operation, help text. Uh, okay, so we need to put these questions in the database. So let's go ahead and create a data model for these. Data model. I'm not going to add these to the, the actual database just yet, um, and the reason why is because I'm not sure when this is getting committed, so I don't necessarily want to add database tables in a migration yet, so I'm going to first make these, and for now we're just going to put them in memory, so we're going to fake that they exist a little bit, um, and then we'll actually pull them from the repository later. <sighs> Sorry, I had to take a Pepsi break there not sponsored uh, let's see what is this called quiz question could call it an entity because that's what we've been calling most of the other things that we store in the database we might shift all of them to have that naming convention um, and this one is a data entity. So let's give it a property string. Uh, what do we want this to be? Uh, main question. Hint one. Hint two. And then, um, we need to have uh, the right answer and two wrong answers. So we're going to say correct answer, or three wrong answers, I should say. So don't mind that I'm hard coding to the fact that this is four pieces for now. This data, like, this will just be data in the system, so we could change it at some point in the future if we need to. So, um, so there's wrong answer one, and then two and three, three and two. So wrong answer one, wrong answer two, and wrong answer three, uh, all ought to work. <clears throat> so now this would be the model that we would put in the database when we create one of these quiz questions. So every quiz question would have a main question that it's going to ask, it's then going to have a hint it's going to give, a second hint, and then it's going to give the correct answer. Or then, it, then it's going to decide who got the right answer. Now that I think about this, it might be that we want to have people that have joined the game uh, whisper to the bot to give it their answer. So that might be how we lock in what, what everyone's answer is, is they whisper back to the bot and say what they think it is. Uh, that way you can't see your opponent's guesses, so that we really could have it, you know, ask these questions and then award points to everyone who got the answer right. Okay, so let's, let's think about that. Uh, so, we now have a quiz question entity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the quiz game and I'm going to make a method that is called get random question and that's where the lie is going to take place. So what we're going to do is this, we're going to make 
um, private quiz question any get random question and all this is gonna do is just return back a new one of these so the same question is gonna get asked every time I apologize everybody but this is how v1 is gonna work and then once once we're planning on putting this actually in and we're getting closer to being done with this then we'll add the data model that way I don't have to deal with maintaining the database for this now what I could do to get around this is I could change the connection string inside of this branch and then switch it back later. Uh, but I don't want to duplicate the database and deal with that because of the fact that this is sort of production and dev and staging and test all at once here on my computer. Uh, just because of what we do here. Uh, hint 1 and then hint 2 is that. Correct answer is that. Um, wrong answer one is that. Wrong answer two is that. And wrong answer three. And I don't need to give it an ID. We don't care. Okay. There we go, everybody. So that is our basic format for our quiz question. We need to come up with a question. Uh, uh, is it overkill to add... The entity at the end. Uh, Silver Twitch 2. Um, it is a good question. The reason I put entity on the end is because we have a couple of things in here that uh, we've got model objects. So that's what tells it this is one that actually connects to the database. But you're right, since I don't think we're going to have a quiz question that's not one that's stored in the database, I am going to get rid of it. So I agree with you. Let's get rid of it. So we're going to chop the word entity off the end. And we're going to do that. <laughs> Robbie. Yeah, so uh, we will chop it. Uh, so uh, who is the best uh, C-sharp Twitch streamer? Um... Uh, so let's say the correct answer is clearly dev chatter, right? Right? Clearly, clearly, you know, you know, modesty here. Like I'm also the most modest of Twitch streamers. Uh, so who is the best C sharp Twitch streamer? Uh, let's see. Uh, C sharp Fritz is one other choice here. Fritz. There we go. Um, I went and started watching your videos on YouTube, but I didn't see the beginning where you actually connected the bot. Um, yeah, Robbie, I need to look. So someone was saying that um, <laughs> this, this isn't supposed to be a long-term question. This is like the one fake one while we're building it, and then we'll put real questions in later. Uh, so uh, who is another Twitch streamer? Um, uh, oh, well, you're here, so... Um, Oh, let's see, uh, um, certainly not any of these other choices, Ka Kappa, uh, and, uh, let me see, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, uh, well, alright, that's what you get, Robbie, congratulations. You're in there. Uh, now, hint one and hint two. Um, we aren't wearing hats. Um, uh, and uh, then the one here is uh, certainly not any of these others can, but I actually did stream like four months ago making a Twitch bot in C Sharp. Robbie, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, so technically I started this stream two years ago. Um, so, we aren't wearing hats. Who's the best C-Sharp streamer? Uh, we aren't wearing hats. Uh, and, um, uh, Brendan is arrogant 
enough, uh, enough wouldn't you say? Uh, I, wait, uh, is, uh, sorry, I spelled modest, modest wrong. Uh, you just had wrong settings. Uh, that could be. Yeah, so dropping frames is really a tough thing. There's there's a lot of stuff that can that can make that kind of stuff go wrong. Okay, so starting the quiz. Uh, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna choose a random question. We're gonna bring that back. Random question there. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna say chat client dot send message, and we're gonna send the random question dot main question. Whoops. Dot main question. Then what we're gonna do is we are gonna say automated action system dot add action new uh, delayed message action of random random question dot hint one and it is going to be delayed to be about uh, delay in seconds. What do we want to go with here? Uh, Sixty seconds. No, twenty seconds. 15 seconds, there we go. Chat client, there we go. And then uh, at 30 seconds. Now it'll be 10, 20, and then 30 seconds is how long you had to answer. So 10, 20, and then that'll be hint two. So at 10 seconds you get your first hint, 20 seconds you get your second hint, and then at 30 seconds that's when you have to actually have responded. So that means that our third line here is going to be add action. Uh, this is going to be a one-time callback action. This is at a 30 second interval. And that is going to be, whoops. We now need to call something. Uh, end, uh, so we're going to say, End question. Complete question. That'll work. Random question. Create method, void. Sure, there we go. Um is this asynchronous? Uh, yeah, Robbie sort of, sort of is, yes. Uh, short answer is yes. Uh, I stream 720p with a one point and a one bit limit upload. Yeah, WTF blub. So uh, people are correct. You can actually get away with streaming with pretty low, uh, with a pretty low connection. I would really like to have a better connection where I am, uh, but I don't get a great one either. So we'll see what we get out of this. Um, so, yep, uh, stream's been going for about two and a half hours. Welcome, Summer. Um, hopefully everybody's having a good one. So, basically, this is the plan here. Um, we're going to send out what the question is, and then we're going to set it up to give the hints, and then we're going to say complete the question. And uh, here's what I'm going to say is I'm going to say, uh, whoops, I needed to send the chat client in there too. Chat client that. Okay, there we go. Add a parameter. So we're going to say chat client send message. Uh, the correct answer was random question dot correct answer. Now we need to say. Uh, I want to say random question uh, dot set and return uh, letter string. Wait, uh, one megabit upload in 2018. Yeah. Is one time callback a delegate? Uh, Dougie G, uh, not exactly. That's a lambda expression, which is kind of like a delegate. So uh, I guess I'll say yes, but it's not not exactly. 
so yeah, super annoying. But internet in Germany sucks. Yeah, so internet in a lot of places actually sucks. Um, the the annoying thing is, it, so if I were to move one town north of where I am, uh, that that town has fiber internet and it's quite nice. And right here where I am, we have you know crappy internet, so it's kind of annoying. Uh, not not all that consistent. Uh, set and return letter string. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna make this method, which I'm gonna fix its name eventually, but here's what we're gonna do. Um, I want to, uh, basically have a property that we're gonna get, uh, that is what the letters are for these answers. So, um, prop, uh, list of... Uh, we're gonna say string, string for now, because I don't have a better choice, and we're gonna call this uh, letter assignment. Uh, Six year ago, now five hundred. Just let us have that it's hundred command. Uh, instead of saying the other way to get the commands from the bot in the command list, I just added a timer that adds a message. Hey, make sure you do 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 for a list of available commands. Have a command saying them again in the list that kind of features kind of redundant. Oh yeah, yeah. So Robbie, um, we actually have like tons of ways to actually call our commands also. So like if you want to get our list of commands, you can do CMD, you can do help, you can do CMDS, you can do command, you can say commands. So you'll notice that like every way, so we want you to quote, fall into the pit of success. So whatever, uh, whatever you want to do. So you just have a, uh, you just have a reminder that's going out. So yeah, we could set up an automated message that just goes out and reminds everybody that you can use your commands. I see that in a lot of channels. You mean kind of like our one that reminds you to click the follow button. Yeah, so uh, let's see, set and return letter string. So I need to return back uh, a string dot join of the with We're gonna have to do that, and then this needs to be uh, assignments dot select. Now I'm gonna have pull this onto its own line, so it's not so messy. So don't worry about that. Um, it's not gonna get too bad in here. So we're gonna say x item one. That's fine. I'm, I'm going to fix these names, don't worry, it's not going to be item 1 and item 2. Um, oh, actually, here's what we should do. Um, I'm going to build this string. Here's what we're gonna do. Um, the string equals this. Here, we're gonna do it like this. Return the string then. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say A. Uh, is, um, What's A gonna be? It's gonna be letter assignment string. There we go. Uh, letter assignment, and then um, uh, B, and then letter assignment. C, whoops, close that, C, comma, C, and then letter assignment, don't worry, I'm gonna, and then D, letter assignment, and then I am gonna just put these in zero, one, two, and three. So the order that these are in here is how we're gonna do this. 
That's going to be two. That's going to be one. So that's how you're going to know what they are. Uh, wouldn't it be easier to use characters? They're not, um, I could, but no, no, no. They're not actually going to be the characters because they're going to be the full answer stored in here. Um, so, yeah. So I'm going to do it like that. Um, so, um, set and return letter string. So that'll get you a letter string. Oh, you know what? You're right. I should do it like this. I should do it like this. It should be a character string, uh, car string on a dictionary, shouldn't I? I probably should do it like this. You're right. Um, where what we end up with is um, where we do a for each letter assignment assignment we're gonna say our assignment and then uh, that's assignment dot key and then that and then assignment dot value instead of a for each this should really become a select on letter assignment so we're gonna say letter assignment dot select and then we're gonna say assignment And we're going to do this. Now we're going to get rid of that. We're going to bring this. We're going to say string dot join on a comma space that code there. And that gets us this string. So that's basically what we need to do once we've created our dictionary. So now we need to create the dictionary. Because uh, then you can take one of the options instead of all. So if we did it this way, uh, now, now I might change car to string only because it's sometimes easier to work with because a lot of things give you strings despite the fact that they're only single letter because it doesn't know it is only a character. Uh, we'll see how that works out. If I can like first it or something like that, then we'll get away with it that way and it'll make it easier. So now we need to create that letter assignment. Uh, so we're going to say um, uh, I am going to lazy uh, load this thing. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to say uh, we're going to give this a private uh, dictionary this underscore letter assignment return uh, and now I'm gonna let resharper help me here we're gonna say if that equals null then we are going to this equals new dictionary and we're gonna do stuff with it uh, and then after that we are going to return this Uh, anyway, you gotta go. Uh, Robbie, have a good one. Thanks for stopping by today. Uh, I love manipulating strings more. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of this stuff, interestingly, could be spans, too. For anybody that doesn't know what a span is in C-sharp, um, we could definitely get away with these being, uh, spans instead of strings. Uh, because we're not really doing anything with them. So we just need a window on that, uh, array that already exists, that, you know, contiguous memory block. Uh, okay, so we're creating a new dictionary of these types, and now I want, to ins I want to insert them in a specific order. So, what I am going to do is this. Um, we have a myRandom in here, 
choose random item. Uh, whoops. Yeah, I wanted to do that. Uh, choose random item from... Uh, hang on. I want to say... Uh... This. I want to say A... Equals... No... Don't kill me, guys. I'll explain in a second. And for anybody who hasn't seen this syntax before, this is called... Um, uh, you could either call this the dictionary initializer or the index initializer, and this is a feature of C-sharp uh, 6 or 7. I forget which one, so I apologize for not remembering which one, but it's one of those that actually lets me initialize a dictionary like this, um, passing in those parameters that way. And now I'm putting in these values, and... Um, what I can do is this. I want to create an array with all of these items in there and I'm going to order them randomly. So I am going to make a new array. So I'm gonna say new list of t, uh, list of string. And in this list of string, I am gonna say correct answer, wrong answer, one, two, three, three, and now what I'm going to do with this is I am going to say uh, order by and I am going to say uh, grid dot new grid so I now have a randomly ordered collection right here so this is going to be an I ordered enumerable uh, which I really don't care that that's the type and we're going to call this random set So now I can take this and I can assign random set zero to this one. Oh, can't, because that's a, yeah, so we're going to two list this. So that I can get away with the code I'm writing right here. I'm going to do that. And then this one's going to be one, two, three. There we go. Uh, not the worst thing ever. Uh, what are you saying in here, Kixin 1987? Uh, I like the A... Oh, you like that syntax better. But the problem is you gotta, like, double up your curlies if you're doing that one, Kixin. Yeah, yeah, well, you, yeah, you need, like, do you need extra... Cur it's like curlies upon curlies. See, I like this because it it's definitely a dictionary initialization. But, yeah, there's... I, it comes down to preference on that one. Uh, so, yeah, so, <laughs> uh, depends on what you mean by data structure, but I would say it's probably the, the list object, which is, uh, kind of like a C++ vector or an array, uh, uh and Machiavellio, uh, is a good practice to have this kind of logic in the getter? Shouldn't getters be idempotent and have little to no logic? Uh, so that is actually a very good question. Um, so this is called, so this is like a lazy loaded thing, so we could put this somewhere else. So for now I'm putting it in here, um, because I was, I was originally going to do this as just create the data object if we needed it, but we should probably have done the random thing first if we were going to do that. So I think you're right. I think we're going to put this down here instead, uh, but that's just how I wanted to build it to begin with. So... Random set, uh, so that is mixing a list and so uh, we will say, um, yeah, let's let's do it this way. So we'll do if letter assignment uh, is is not null, then uh, return. Uh, Uh, if actually if it equals null, then we're going to set it. So we'll move it in there. Uh, 
and we will get rid of this whole getter entirely. So we'll do that. We'll say if it's null, go ahead and do this. Uh, Stuggy G, welcome. Thank you for following. You've been here in here for a little bit. Uh, yeah, DevXer. Uh, .NET Core 3 is on the way. Uh, we are just picking up .NET Core 2.1. So I have a branch that we haven't brought in yet that is uh, this project on .NET Core 2.1. And uh, it is bringing in ASP.NET Core as part of that. Uh, so should be a good one. Uh, I'm a horrible person. If you see what I just did, I don't know if you guys knew that you could do that, but I can just say new array and it implicitly figures out that it's a string array and does that for me. So we're now one lined again, but I'm still going to keep it on two lines because I think it's prettier this way. And then letter assignment there. Uh, yeah, so Kixen, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to be switching to 2.1 and we're going to use SignalR. That's that's exactly why we've been waiting for 2.1. We've been actually complaining for a while about the fact that 2.1 wasn't out yet. Uh, yes, yes, yes. 2.1 should be very, very good. I am looking forward to making use of a lot of it. Uh, so we're going to do that. So our random assignment, we're going to select it and then, okay, so let's go ahead and when we do that, if it's null, we're going to reassign, but if not, we're going to keep it the way it is, which means that we can recheck these by checking the letter assignment. Um, we may have to make this public. And, and make this a uh, get private set. Now the problem is someone outside can still manipulate this because we didn't make it like a read-only dictionary or anything like that. Uh, we're going to rename that again. So we're going to do it like this, I think. Uh, we'll assign that into there. Okay, so let's jump back to the game for a second. It's going to grab this. We're going to use that, so we're going to set it and return the message. We're going to send that out, but this is just the, the letters. So that's our options. So we're going to ask the question, then we're going to give the options. And then we're going to wait around for that. We're not going to be able to actually answer yet, but here, here, let's give this a test, everybody. We're going to go ahead and run it for now, see what happens. And uh, heck, maybe maybe it'll work, maybe it'll break. We don't know. That's, that's why we're going to give it a quick little run here. Um... We're going to need to write some more unit tests for this, obviously, because there's a lot of pieces of this we want to check. But let's go ahead and start up a quiz game. I'm going to go ahead and join the game. Anybody else is welcome to join the game, too. Not that there's any game to play yet, because we can't actually answer. So being able to guess is is, uh, is one of the important parts of being able to do a, uh, a game here, but should be fine. Uh, and uh, a couple of people are going to join the game, so it should give a warning about 30 seconds in. It's going to warn everybody that there's only 30 seconds left to join. And uh, then, so there it is. There's the message about 30 seconds left to join. And uh, then a couple of more people are going to join in the game. So you'll notice that I just said, like, join the game and other things like that. So when we get this interface for, like, a joinable game concept, that's going to be really nice. Uh, I'm hoping that they can all use that, reuse that same concept. Uh, so we can make a bunch of joinable games easily. And then anybody else that wants to add a module to this project, for example, could also add a joinable game. So I'm trying to keep everything nice and easy. Ah, here it goes. Who is the best C-Sharp Twitch streamer? Uh, Dev Chatter, C-Sharp Fritz, uh, and Robbie. Wait, is that... Did it, did it actually order those? Did I... Was that, was that the order that I originally had? Uh, we aren't wearing hats. When it is modest enough, would you say? Ah, look, it's doing the thing with giving hints. It's like playing one of those quiz games. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Kixon. Uh, there you go. Appreciate, appreciate that support there. Uh, the correct answer was Dev Chatter. Hey, there we go. Okay, so awesome. Uh, so it, it did exactly what I wanted it to do there. 
Uh, that was that was precisely what we were going for the whole way, so that was very cool. Um, uh, let's see, adding quiz questions, and the bot bombed out, because of course it did, because someone probably triggered something. Adding quiz questions. Was that just something? Yeah, okay. <sighs> we have a couple of bugs that I need to go fix that I don't want to, I don't really feel like doing on stream. I'd rather do the fun stuff right now. I'm eventually probably going to do it on stream. I don't know. I might fix it off stream. We'll see. Uh, if I do it off stream, uh, if I, any, so for anybody that's a regular here, you know, if I do anything serious off stream, I cover it in a pull request at the beginning of the next stream. So you get to see what I did, even if you didn't see how I did it. Um, so did I, let me, let me look at this code again. Did I do something weird? Gwid, order by gwid.newgwid and then dot to list. I'm so weirded out by that, to be honest. I don't understand why that didn't work. I thought that gwid.newgwid trick was going to work. Yeah, I really thought that was going to work. Um, huh. But we'll take a look because we're going to run it again and we'll see what we get. You only have 30 seconds. Uh, you have several classes in the same file. I thought it was a good practice. Of Machiavellio. Yes, it is. Um, I actually only have two classes in this file, um, but they're, they're very related in this one. Um, and if I have more than that somewhere, then that's a problem. The only one I've got here is this is basically a helper for this. So that's the only reason it's in here. And D, certainly not these. Oh, okay, so it did It did do it. It just it keeps throwing mine first. That's kind of weird, so just random. Uh, we aren't wearing hats. And uh, Brendan is modest enough, wouldn't you say? Correct answer is dev chatter. Yeah, so um, keep in mind, uh, Machiavellio, that... Uh, also in C sharp, you're actually able to have a nested class, so which is another weird concept. So I could do that here. So if I did this, for example, I could just move this curly down to here, and then that class is actually inside the other class. But I don't want to do that. So okay, um, here we go. Uh, let's see. We don't have any changes. I'm going to push that up for now. Um, okay, so we can successfully tell people about the question. We now need to let them start answering it. And what do we do when we complete the questions? The correct answer was this. So in here, um, correct answer was this. Uh, do congratulate the winners winners uh, and then later we'll have multi question Okay, uh, MTC, I've been learning C-sharp, and this one thing about strings and equality make me WTF. So, as far as I get when using strings, using equals, uh, equals, reference equals, do the same thing because the serial will create one instance instead of two or more. But why did they do this? I find it very confusing. Um, Oh, uh, MTC. So, um, to give you a short answer, classes in C Sharp. So, you need the concept of what a value type and a reference type is in C Sharp. Uh, 
uh, welcome, uh, Gatton Haverde. Uh, thank you for following, and I apologize if I just butchered your name. Uh, what tool does that to your to-dos? Uh, the thing that does the highlighting on my to-dos there, Machiavellio, is what Aurora Boris said. It's ReSharper that's doing the highlighting, but there's also some significance to the, the word to-do if you don't know in Visual Studio. Before I get back to answering that question, you can actually pull up the task list, and it will show you in your code where all the to-dos are. So that's actually just in View and then Task List. So if, any, if you've never seen that before, anytime you left a to-do comment, you can actually go find them later. Uh, and, um, yeah, so, um, MTC, so the idea is, no, 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 so, um, uh, in a referential compare, so when you do a reference, a quality comparison, so if I have two reference types, even if, Spooky Coder, welcome, thanks for the follow also, uh, if you have two objects that are reference types, so in this case in C Sharp, we're talking about like a class, if we haven't defined how to do an equality comparison on them, what C Sharp is actually going to do behind the scenes is it's going to do what's called a reference comparison. And what that's going to mean is it's going to look to see, is that are they the same type and are they pointed to the same location in memory? And if the answer is yes, then it's going to call them equal. And so what that means is if you actually have two variables that store the same exact object, you're going to have referential equality. Now, if you define for your type a more specific type of equality, which is you want to make it so that it, you know, does an actual comparison of the internal structure of the object to tell you whether or not it's the same, that's like, really, is it equal? So if I had two separate strings I created that each said the word hello, uh, for example, uh, they would be equal because string implements a concept of equality that's actually going to compare the actual strings themselves. Now, if I make a custom type, it is not actually going to do that comparison. So, uh, for example, if I have two chat user objects, the chat user object does not have the equality code written in here. So if you guys take a look at this, let me get rid of this window. Ah, there we go. Um, nothing in here tells C Sharp how to compare these two objects. So the only way it can do it is when I do an equals on these objects, it's just gonna say, oh, are these two chat users the exact same object in memory? So it's gonna check their, their pointer and see if they're pointing to the same location in memory and that they're the same type. And if they are, then it's gonna say they're equal. If they're not, it's gonna say they're not equal. Even if every one of these values, it's got the same user ID, it's got the same display name, it's got the same role, it's got the same tokens, it will not call them the same because I didn't tell it how to do that. If I wanted to do that, before I do this, let me just make sure my code is in. Uh, adding some to do comments. Uh, one second, let me commit that and then I will show you what happens. So uh, I am going to cheat and let ReSharper do some work for me here because uh, it'll do it. I'm going to do an alt insert and I want to add the equality members. Uh, and we're going to say user ID, display name, role, and tokens is not part of comparing that they're the same. Uh, and we're going to say implement the iEquality. There we go. So one nice thing is ReSharper will write code for me. Uh, so I have told ReSharper to actually do this, to write this code for me, and I want to show you what it creates. So this is actually, the reason ReSharper can do this is because this code is so boilerplate that I can also go online and find examples of exactly how to do this, and it's going to be the same code just with replacing, you know, like my type name and some other basic things. This code is so standard throughout C Sharp. Uh, but essentially what it did is this. Um, it, may, it gave me some equals methods. So these are part of the I equatable of chat users. So basically this means that my chat users can, you can compare them with other chat users. Um, and that equality exists. And so what I what it does is you'll notice it does a reference equal uh, on null and the other one, and and then it also does a reference equal on this and the other one, and then it calls equals. So this is how equals works. It first checks to see um, whether or not these objects are actually referentially equal, and if they are, it's going to say yeah, yeah, it's, it, that's this one here. So if if they are pointing to the exact same memory location and are the same type, it's going to say yeah, these are the same object. So since they're the same object, they're going to be equal. But then what it's going to do is it's actually going to do a string equals 
on the user ID, the display name, and the role. So you'll notice I picked those as my choices. So it's going to say if you have the same user ID, the same display name, and the same role. So that's what I've defined here. That's what we're going to get. Uh, in addition, you'll notice that it also overrides the object comparison one. So this is when it's comparing against another chat user. And that's how it's able to check those types. But down here, it doesn't know that. So this is the one where it got an object. So what it's actually going to do is it's going to see if that's not the same type we're going to return false. If it is, it's going to cast it as a chat user and call this method up here. And we're going to do that same comparison again. And then down here, uh, you'll notice it also does get hash code, which is an important thing to make sure that you implement, um, which I will point out. So this is whenever, whenever um, something needs to do hashing based on this object. So for example, if you wanted to use this as part of a dictionary or something like that, don't write your own code to do this. Grab, grab some code like this. Check on the internet for how to write a get hash code method because if you mess this up, you are going to have some very weird results. So don't write this yourself. That's why I let ReSharper build it for me because the one it made is not terrible. Uh, so that's the idea is in C Sharp by default, comparisons are not going to be what you think they are. You actually have to write your own if you really want them to work. Uh, and... And do I have any changes? I don't think I do. Oh, yep, that's a change. We'll discard that. Uh, yeah, so WTF Blub mentions that .NET Core uh, has a helper for hash code also. Uh, there are another couple of things that I should point out. Um, if you create anonymous types, so for anybody that doesn't know, an anonymous type in C Sharp is when you just kind of do like new, and then I say like uh, first name equals Brendan. And then I say middle name equals danger, because danger is my middle name after all. And then last name equals Enric. And then this is an anonymous object that I've just sort of created here on the fly. Uh, so now I have that, and so uh, foo dot first name, last name, and middle name. So what's neat about this is that with these types, because they're sort of built into the language, interestingly, and they and they aren't really so concerned about their memory piece. So some of these types actually get you some equality comparison out the gate also. Um, and then uh, they're starting to build that in for other things as well. So um, it's just sort of how C Sharp was built. Uh, and uh, MTC, welcome. Thank you for following. I guess that means you are enjoying this discussion. Um, so anyway, uh, the correct answer was that. Uh, congratulate the winners. Reset the game. Uh, there are multiple questions. Congratulate the winners. Join the quiz now. Okay, so we need to be able to get a winner. Uh, so what do we do in the... I want to open up the guess quiz operation uh, and try to execute. So you're doing that. So I'm going to say uh, game dot uh, and I might actually get rid of the. So we started off with operations. I might nuke them and just go back to calling this directly if we don't end up really having much need for them. Um, so <laughs> and see. Streamlabs finally figured out that you followed. Our bot figured it out ages ago. Streamlabs has taken forever. Uh, okay, so... Um, we'll say update guess. Uh, and... Ventargs. Chat user. Ventargs. Arguments. Dot first um, and we know that there is a first because you never could have gotten here without it so that is your guess and we are going to return the result of that for now We're going to create that method. Chat user string. This is not first, this is guess. 
So there we go. We are going to update our guess and... I kind of want to make this a dictionary. String, string. Now I wonder what blew up as a result of that, huh? Nope, not values, keys. There we go. Uh, our competitors are the keys. Um... Insert them in with with no guess to begin with. Uh, so we're gonna have to change this structure later. Because that's like the player and their guest together, so I'm gonna have to rename that. Um uh, current players contains key chat user dot display name uh, else uh, return you aren't playing stop it Add a dollar sign to the beginning of that, jump to the end with that there, and let's say chat user dot display name. You aren't playing, stop it, person. Um, and then we want to say return uh, dollar sign double quote. Uh, you updated your guess to guess chat user. And we'll have to do other things like recording the amount of time that has passed since the question started uh, so that we can figure out, like, we can give you points based on how long until you locked in your, your guess. So something like that. So it's one of those games where the sooner you can answer the question, the more points you get. So changing your guess, you're always allowed to, but it's going to give you a new point in time when you answered. So... Rather than being a dictionary, this is probably going to become a list with a more complex object in it. So we're just going to make a type for it, and it's going to have something like the person's name and their guess and something like that. So, okay, so now what we're going to do is, so we have the person and their guess in there, and yeah, you're right, I don't need that else anymore because I've got the other one. Uh, so... Uh, so we updated your guess. So then we want to do current players uh, chat user dot display name equals guess. Okay, so now when we end the game, so congratulate the winners. So we want to say current players. Value equals uh, so string correct uh, whoops char character whoops uh, string oh uh, Stuggy so the dollar sign is for string interpolation and at sign at the beginning uh, is oh I forget what it's called um, but that is a feature where you can have more literal stuff in your strings. So things like, um, uh, if you need new lines and stuff like that, the dollar sign lets me insert variables. So string interpolation is like a fancy way of saying like, 
string insertion almost, so it's like I can insert values into a string. That's all that means. Uh, so correct uh, answer uh, equals, uh, what is it? It is, where did we get? Ran uh, no, 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 I got, got random questions. Yeah, it's random question. So it's random question dot um, letter, uh, whoops, dot letter assignment uh, where value equals random question dot correct answer. And I don't want to where, I want a single. There will be one. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is the correct uh, letter. So I should say correct letter, because it's not really the answer, this is the letter. So we want to find where someone gave us that letter. Uh, and in order to make sure that they gave us that letter, um, I want to make sure that we too lower it when we insert in their guess. So there we go. So when we insert their guess, we are going to two lower it despite what they gave us. And then that is going to tell us these are the winners. Uh, so that's var winners. So we're going to congratulate the winners. So chat client send message. We're going to say uh, congratulations, congratulations to... Uh, string dot join and we're gonna do a comma space and winners those are not the uh, and we want to say dot select key there we go so that's gonna be the name of the winners so we're going to congratulate the winners, and then we'll reset the game, which we're not doing yet. So there we go. Yeah, so Stuggy, if you've seen uh, a, a string, uh, like string formatting in uh, C Sharp, string interpolation is basically string formatting, but a little nicer. Whoops, uh, whoops sorry, I forgot to start game first. Uh, quiz join. All right, uh, feel free to join the game. We should be able to get congratulated as a winner now, so you should be able to compete in this game. Uh, Donet Core replacing Mono. Um, MTC. Uh, not ex so. Yes and, and yes and no. Um, like, uh, keep in mind that .NET running on Linux is Mono basically. So .NET Core running on Linux is is basically is Mono. Um, it's just like. It's just like .NET Core Mono, so uh, I don't actually see it disappearing. The Dark Magician! <laughs> uh, gotta believe in the heart of the cards there, man. Welcome, Dark Magician. Uh, so we're all going to hop in this quiz game. We're going to see how it goes. Uh, obviously, we're all going to get the right answer because it's literally on my screen. So if you get this answer wrong, uh, I will be really impressed. Janisku, are you not hopping in the game? Quick! Uh, who is the best? Uh, oh, clearly it is Quiz A. Uh, I updated my guest to A. Oh, that's not my name. That's not my name. Uh, not display name. <laughs> uh, we aren't wearing hats. Quiz B. Oh, WTF Blub, what? What? Thanks, WTF Blub. Don't like, man. So, now let's see. Congratulations to uh, burr, burr, burr. the correct answer was Dev Chatter. Congratulations to nobody. So apparently something didn't work right. 
What didn't work right? I don't know yet, but we're going to find out. Um, so, let's see. Congratulations to nobody. Correct answer was that. Uh, letter assignment. So I'm going to do this. We are going to debug this one. Stop. Exit. Let's toss it in there. I'm going to. I'm going to take a look at what's going on right there when we complete the question. We'll have a look. See, Kappa. Whoops. Get rid of that. We don't need that breakpoint. We don't need this breakpoint. Uh, can you tell I was debugging the uh, Twitch connection there? All right. So now the bot should be running there. Let's go ahead and get the quiz game started because the sooner we get it started, the sooner it is going to get us to our answer. So let's go ahead and hop in another quiz game. We'll see what we got this time. Probably should have debugged that last one. Let's take a look. Should be good. Quiz join. And then... Uh, so while while we're waiting for this, I guess I can I can mention a couple of things. For anybody that doesn't know, all the code that we have that we do here on chat is out on GitHub. Uh, so GitHub.com slash devchatters where you'll find all the code that we do here on stream. Uh, Dev chatter uh, is not specific to C sharp, but it's what we're mostly gonna do because uh, that's that's really my wheelhouse. It's it's where I do most of my development work, so I'm very familiar with it and I like it a lot. Uh, so most of what we're going to do is .NET, .NET Core, C Sharp, ASP.NET, ASP.NET Core, all the various, you know, Microsoft goodness. Uh, we're going to toss stuff on Azure. We're going to mess around with Blazor uh, and Quiz and B is my answer. Uh, and so um, anyway, uh, I also want to mention that we stream four times a week, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So if you enjoy Dev Chatter, you can catch us a whole bunch uh, throughout the week. We usually stream for about two hours, but we run long sometimes. We are over three hours right now. Uh, whoops. And I was typing in chat right then, so that was a bummer. Uh, let's see, so the correct letter, oh, I didn't pull the letter, I pulled the value, I meant to pull key, that's the problem, fixed. We're good now. I found the issue, that's why we couldn't congratulate anyone. Car. So, now we need to change... Whoops, not that. We want to go to this. We are going to say that that is a car. And that is a car. And now when we assign it, we're going to have a problem. Uh, whoops. Back ticks, Brendan? What are you doing? What are you smoking? Uh, two lower and then dot first, maybe? There you go. Actually, it should be a single, so we're going to do a single. Alright, there we go. Uh, that'll be a Z, because Z is certainly wrong. Guess I could make it an empty space also. Because that also won't match any of the letters. Okay, now I'm going to run this. Now our quizzes should work. So as I said, uh, we stream four times a week, Mondays, Tuesdays, uh, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And now I'm going to go ahead and do quiz, and then quiz join. Uh, so we are uh, a community that likes writing code, and we're pretty much willing to work on almost any code. Most The project we work on the most is our chatbot, which is the one we're doing here. Uh, it's got a lot of games and other things in it that we think are fun. Uh, but we also work on a couple of other things, including our Game Tracker program, which is designed to let you keep track of games that you might play with your friends, so you can see who won what game you played, things like that. So, should be a good one. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, what, uh, what else is going on that we want to talk about? Um, 
Oh, if you are interested in talking with any of us outside of the chat, there are actually a number of us that are in the Discord, and there is actually chat that takes place on there, unlike uh, other Discords you may have joined. Uh, this one actually does have people talking about code, and a lot of the people that are in here talking about code are the ones that are contributing to the projects. So uh, if you do want to talk to the people that like writing code, that is a good place to do it. And I like that our randomness is starting to show some real answers here. Uh, and I, I love that, we aren't wearing hats. Uh, for anybody that knows, C-Sharp Fritz wears hats. That's what that one means. Uh... Oh, yeah, see, WTF Blub figured out that he did the wrong answer and changed. All right, let's see, let's see. We got a couple of seconds. Congratulations! Hey, there it is! We got it. No points are actually awarded. Uh, the points mean nothing, and there is actually no winner. But well done, everybody. Um, so that ought to get us what we want there. So that's working. Let's go ahead and commit this. So this is congratulating the winners. Um... Update guess. So this is allow guessing and display winners. This game commit push. Uh, your guess, not you. Uh, oh, did I say something wrong? You updated. You guess. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Your guess too. Good catch. Good catch. Uh, fix typo. Fixed typo. There we go. Fixed. All right. So uh, there we go. That is good. Okay. So cool. Um, yeah. Also, uh, the video section in here actually has a lot of fun videos. If you want to check those out. Uh, and Dark Magician, welcome. Thank you for following. Uh, I will take that to mean that you've been enjoying the stream, and you believe in the heart of the stream? Heart of the... something like that, but, uh, that's awesome. Uh, actually, Stuggy, I am gonna wrap up right now. Uh, so we have been going... we've been going here for about three and a half hours, so I am gonna wrap it up here. I usually like to do about a two-hour stream. Uh, and on Thursdays, we start a little bit early, so, uh, this would be, you know, earlier than I would normally wrap up on my other days, but, uh, I don't want to run too late today. Uh, I wanted to thank everybody for showing up and chatting today. Uh, I wanted to thank everybody who cheered. Uh, we got a couple of cheers today. Uh, so I wanted to thank those people for doing that. That's always appreciated. And uh, all the follows, the views, participation in the stream, anybody that, uh, you know, is involved in any way, greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you do want to check out the project, you can see all the code out here on uh, GitHub. It's at github.com slash devchatter. And you can go there. You can look at the code. Uh, you can make suggestions in our issues section, so if you've got something cool you want us to work on, make a suggestion here, uh, or if you want to contribute, uh, what I'd recommend is you go ahead and, you know, filter down this list to the ones that are marked as good first issues, uh, and or you can take a look at any of them really if you want, but anyone is welcome to contribute to the project. We've actually had a bunch of people that have sent us pull requests in the past, um, so uh, when we get pull requests, we'll review them on stream, we'll talk about them, we'll, we'll give you feedback on the code that you wrote, and uh, if we can, we'll try to contribute it in. If it's not ready to get contributed, we'll tell you what you should change in order for us to bring it in. Uh, so, uh, but if you are going to work on one of those, I'd recommend you hop on Discord so you can chat about it before you send the pull request. So you could say like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, and then we could all be like, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, so uh, that's the deal with that. Um, and then, uh, let's see, uh, you can also follow on Twitter to get notifications about that, and if you want to see, I mentioned that our streams are on uh, Twitch, if you take a look at the videos section, you'll find a lot of the old videos from past streams if you want to check those out, so you can see things like, uh, we learned some about Code Rush from Mark Miller, uh, and just various other ones, and they're in here, so you can take a look at all of our stuff in the past, and if you uh, don't find the video that you're looking for there, the other option is you can take a look at our YouTube channel, uh, which our YouTube channel has a lot of our old archives of things that are no longer on Twitch, because Twitch only keeps videos for so long. So if you want to take a look at some of our early videos where we started the project, uh, you can find some of them there. Now, I do iterative development, and what that means is I always try to get something working, 
and I'm going to get that out on stream. And so on the stream, that's really important is I just want to get something running and it doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need, you know, I can fix it over time. And so what you'll find is that the state of the bot now doesn't look a lot like what it did at the beginning because we're always refactoring. We're coming up with new ideas. We're changing things. We're building on what's already there and, and changing the structure. So um, it's really fun development. So I, I really enjoy it. And I want to thank all of you for being here. And um, I will see all of you again on Saturday because you are going to catch me on Saturday. Uh, and that is that stream starts uh, at 1 p.m. my time, which is Eastern, uh, Eastern Daylight Time right now. Uh, so that is about, uh, let's see, let me... 5 p.m. Uh, UTC, so if you can translate from that. Uh, and if you uh, would have trouble with that, um, you can use our schedule command, which is right here, or you can take a look down below if you're on Twitch right now, and our stream is listed down in the panels section below the video, uh, and that should be converted into your time zone because it should be able to tell where you are, in the world at least, with a rough guess with that panel, and tell you in your time zone. And you'll notice I passed a minus four to our schedule command. You can actually pass whatever your UTC offset is. So if you are, say, uh, in Germany, for example, I think that Germany's is uh, two ahead of UTC. So my stream on Saturday would be at 7 p.m. And uh, we'll be streaming for a couple of hours there. So it's an evening stream in Europe. It is a daytime stream in the United States. And I'm not even going to convert to Asia's time zones, but I have a feeling that my stream is not a very good time for them, so I apologize for anybody that's in that region, because I don't stream at a great time for your schedule. But it's got to fit mine first. So, anyway, uh, it was awesome talking to you all today. Uh, I had a blast. I hope you guys all enjoyed coding too, and I love how you just tried to pass it a minus 23. WTF blub, a plus 8, really? Uh, that's... UTC plus eight. I don't. I don't know where that is. Uh, UTC plus eight. What what region did he just check there? Uh, UTC plus eight. Where is that? UTC plus eight. Uh, where where is that? Uh, wow. Yep, yep, yep. Indonesia Central Standard Time uh, and Western Time in Australia, apparently. That's nice. Uh, yeah, so that, 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 that gets a couple, but yeah. So, hence why I said my stream doesn't start at a great time for them. I start at 2 a.m. Uh, on <laughs> or, or midnight. So, yeah. Uh, WTF blub that will get some of Asia and uh, Australia there. So yeah, no, that's bad for uh, East Asia. So as I said, my stream's not not set up that great for everybody. I get I get what I can, uh, and that's also why I shift a few hours is to help people be able to show up sometimes because I end a little earlier. I start a little earlier in Europe on uh, on Friday. Uh, on oh, uh, I need to adjust that schedule. It's supposed to say Thursdays. Uh, I didn't shift it, uh, which I will do after this. Um, so anyway, um, thank you everybody for stopping by today and we will, uh, catch everybody on, uh, Saturday at 1 p.m. my time and we'll do some awesome coding. So take care everybody and, uh, have a great rest of your day.